I think it's time we blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to another WASD Open. Number 16 this time around. My name is Osti. I'm joined here by Ryer and, of course, Imperius Club. Fellas, we got a new patch. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm very Dane. excited. Yes. Dane, <laughs> Dane is legal. Day two. Day, like, 1.5. He's legal. Mm -hmm. uh, we might see some of him. And the new patch, I got to play it some last night. I'm, I'm really liking it. I think it's a great step in the right direction. Yeah, uh, they also made a note about how like they're going to be doing more patches in the future. They said this is like a temporary and they just want to kind of field out, out the waters. They said this is not the finished finale. They want to keep doing more in the future, kind of in this direction. So we'll have to wait and see. A lot of people were saying it's a little minor. Some people were saying it's a lot. But at the end of the day, I think the tier list is not going to get shaken up too much, in my opinion. No, uh, character specific stuff is few and far between. Some characters got quite a big hit. Um, but what we'll largely be seeing here is a nerf to dash L that's across the board. It just kind of functions differently and a slightly smaller change to guard cancel where it can't be used for that chip out checkmate victory. That's the TLDR of universal patch note changes to look out for. Yeah, the uh, 6XL in question it literally got changed dramatically in this game. Like, if you throw it out at someone and they block it, it pushes both opponents away, so you no, can no longer do a follow-up frame trap of like a close normal. It has to be a far normal, so you mm -hmm. can't get at, or maybe even like a two normal, but you can't. It's not as oppressive as it once was. It's still really good. You're probably going to be seeing a lot of people's neutrals centering around that 6XL still, but just not as overbearing as it once was. Yeah, I, I think like consecutive 6XLs is really where you'll see the difference where 6XL like jab, 6XL jab. Like you're not going to see that as much. And then um, also on whiff plus five frames of recovery yes like it's a big difference on whiff now so we might actually see people whiffing it and then something that i missed the first read through low normals are much better against it the hitbox does not extend as far downwards so stuff like belial 2m cat 2m will stuff it more than previously did they mm -hmm. change something with 2l as well i feel like i read that they changed uh, something far l far l that's what it was okay yeah. yeah, far L's will connect more consistently uh, across the cast as well. So Shout characters out to Percival. like yeah, characters like Percival, Catalina, uh, Zoe, uh, and much more. Like they can all like actually do stuff with their far lights mm -hmm. now. Because what would happen is they'd be crouching, they would just miss. And Percival especially gets a lot of his combos virus from back in the old days from far lights, and then now he just can't even land them because of the crouching. But because of the newest patch. Not only to get the far light. I mean, Percival is. I, I honestly, if there's a patch winner, it's probably Percival. I would agree with that. I got to play him some last night, and it feels like <laughs> feels like vanilla again. Like two L, two L, five L, uh, dash H, two L, five L, uh, dash L. Lots, lots of good stuff. Oh wow, they're right in it. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna, gonna have a goal. Have a goal versus Cornstar. Should be a pretty good one. Yeah, no, I agree. So uh, Siegfried, one of those characters we were talking about earlier, who's pretty much dominating the meta recently. Uh, kind of kind of away with just a little bit of a scratch in terms of uh, the patching, right? The only thing that we noticed from him besides the 6XL uh, universal patch was his unblockable is now a little bit easier to punish. And it you have like, you, it doesn't last as long, so you can spot dodge a little bit easier. It's just, that's it. Just the unblockable. Yep. And on the other hand, Ladiva got a few things, nothing terribly specific. You know, a couple buffs here and there, but that standout change. Very big for Ladiva as well. Both these players getting started with it. And I think we just saw right there the 2M beating out the dash L. Uh, Cornstar getting a really good start here against Gabagool's Ladiva. Yeah. So as you know, uh, Ladiva, one of the, the grappler in the game. So their entire goal is going to be trying to get in there and bait out a grab. Gets a close oh, heavy. No. Drops the combo. That's drops so the, unfortunate. Drops the combo off of that close heavy. Does get the air to air hit, though. Going to use the X headbutt to extend this combo. Time to guess in the corner against Ladiva. You don't want to be here. Backdash. Oh. 
Got clashes for days. Close up, he's going to be able to close that out. A little bit of health left. Doesn't matter. That combo is still climbing. We're going to close that out with a uh, Raging Strike to finish off game number one. I'm going to going to Cornstar. Going to start off 6XL. You can see that little bit of slide back. Doesn't really change too much, except kind of... It's a little riskier to follow up afterwards. Another nice close heavy from Gabagool here, though. Will get this corner combo into the knockdown. Yeah, Gabagool is doing a fantastic job of just, like, applying a little bit of pressure towards Corn, Maybe making them faint out that there's going to be a grab coming up since she is a grappler. That's something that she wants to go for. So close heavies coming out in abundance. But now we can't get out of this corner. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness, that's the combo starter. A Lariat's just not reacting with Cornstar, and this full combo might actually get the kill. Combo limit reached. Dude, that standing unique got so much damage off of it. You gotta remember, that startup is pretty heavy, and there's a very, like, loud sound effect, too. So you got you can't be asleep at the wheel against a move like that. Yeah, that is a, that is a deserved combo follow-up into uh, the kill there for Gabagol, using the unblockable headbutt to finish it off. Plus frames, get off me. Yeah, does he want to play the mix-up game? Just going to spend one of those diamonds just to take back that turn. Does it a second yeah. time. Now we're taking 20% more damage with only one diamond left on the clock. This is a scary place to be in with Ladiva. One crouching you or one command grab could leave into a sequence that leads to death. Unfortunately, that jump in a bit ambitious. Going to get anti aired right into the super for the easy confirm. Get a diamond back. Don't take as much damage. Big plus frames. Yeah, it's going to put Korn in a really good spot. Far H needs to land it one more time to finish this off. They're both playing very patient, waiting for the other person to go for it. Another Brave counter to come out. But now, we're we'll coming through. with the special. That's what you do as Ladiva. You see a projectile coming towards you. We Skybound Art right through it. Oh, Tash out whiffing. No punish. Oh. DP. This should be... Oh, no diamond. You are super dead. Oh, no! Gabagool sure. didn't have any meter to finish it off, but that's okay. We managed to pick it up on the happy little reset. Gabagool taking game one. Yeah, no no meter, no. But any, anything would have killed there. Gabagool luckily picking that back up, up a game against Cornstar. Cornstar looking pretty dominant here to start getting another really nice anti-air there to boot, but not able to close these rounds out. Yeah, Cornstar are definitely playing a little bit more passive here, <laughs> reacting to a lot of these jumps that Gabagool has been... Uh, Dishing out to Siegfried, and he's been getting a lot of damage off of those counter hit uh, anti airs too, and a lot of corner carry on top of it. Oh, dash up command grab, very nice from Gabagool. Gonna make a follow up attempt. Uh, just smashed out. Yeah, just gonna go for that simple double slash. Get the Rekka. Nice before reaction. the projectile even. What? Ooh, spaced a little, unfortunately. Cornstar a little too far away for Gabagool to get the super punish there, but the back throw incident will get us into the corner, and one more good hit will do it here for Gabagool. What's it gonna be? It's a knockdown close heavy oh, one more time. We job. are just karate chopping those shoulders. Gabagool looking confident here going into match point. Cornstar not finding their footing uh, just yet. Gets into combo here to M extension. Gabagool a little bit back. <gasps> Tried to get the anti-air a little bit too late. We're coming up getting a big punish off of the crouching light back in the corner. Combos for days. What's well, going to be the reset? We try to go for it, and we Blockable get setup. it, and that's going to be even additional more damage. Yep, that unblockable setup a little easier to dodge, but Gabagool just not ready for it. Getting stuck in the corner against Siegfried. Tries to jump out, gets the 2H from Cornstar to boot. I mean, you can kind of tell like Gabagool's feeling really uncomfortable on the ground. Like, there's just a, that sword range on top of the fireballs. Definitely looking for that answer to just try to go for the neutral skip. Oh, we're just going to headbutt from that far away and connect it into a command grab. Dash is up. 6XL for the pressure. Plus frames. Every time we've seen that met with a brave counter. Going to go for the meaty close heavy. Jump in. Successful for Cornstar. Looking good. Yeah. Eight. Opting to go for the EX variety too just to get some more damage. Spending it on the meter. Get rid of that BP. Regain a BP in the process. Gavagul is going to be in a really tough spot. Safe jump situation, oh. just get mashed out on. Possibly going for an empty jump low and a reset in the middle of that with the 2H and a reset into the command grab super. Zero diamonds, I think you might be dead. I, you're taking 50% more damage, I don't know. Let's count it, do we hear two? Oh, <laughs> you're dead! <laughs> what, a, what a scrambly situation from a Gabagool there. We might even catch it all in the replay, but we got a uh, drop combo early into a 2H launch. Side switch underneath into a command grab. Yeah, we're going to see all that right here. Or no, this is from earlier in the set. Excuse me. Yeah, so that, that was yeah. the first guy about that I was able to get through right through the projectile. But the second one that didn't work, very unfortunate. But yeah, look at all that health because all the diamonds were gone. Super Skybound Art does take away two of those BP. 
you're gonna be taking 50 percent more damage even sick for you can't believe he, yeah, like, he knew he, he was like ah oh, damn like i got <laughs> yeah <laughs> Super nice. The Gabagool are going to advance on on the winner's side. Um, in this 80 plus person bracket, we got a pretty big amount of entrance today. A lot of killers, a lot of familiar faces. We'll definitely see more of them. And if you like the players that are currently playing, you can help contribute to the match arena to make our prize pool for them even bigger. Yeah, uh, dude, look at all these codes. Last week. Th th there's so many codes no, you guys no. can use on there. Uh, you know, all you got to do is hit exclamation point match arena. It'll send you right over to the site to be able to get that code in. If you guys are feeling super generous, you can send some cash that way or complete some quests. Anything you want to help out these players are putting on quite the show. And like you said, 80 plus entrance. That's really cool for Grand Blue because I think, it, you know, the new patch came out. People have been kind of waiting for this patch before coming back into the game especially if you're playing like a top tier character you were kind of afraid of what was going to happen to them you wanted you didn't want to like get too used to it maybe yeah agreed and i think we also this is just a sign of things to come this is day two of the patch a lot of people still want to feel it out probably before taking it to the competitive streets um but yeah i've, I've definitely seen a lot more people on even just the ranked streets so a lot of people coming back and really feeling out the game again after what well, feels like a really long time without patches yeah uh, i mean it's it's the first real patch of the game right of, of rising yep. specifically because we've had a, like a bunch of like bug fixes in the past which kind of changed characters but not really but now that we're here with the newest one we got a lot of stuff plus vein has been out i've been grinding vein a lot i've been waiting for this character to come out i love vein so much and he's mad fun at first i was kind of like this character makes no sense and then now he makes all of the sense <laughs> the game yeah, just, cool. he, he plays neutral for you you don't have to do anything you just put the shield out and you're good to go yeah, he's really cool i've gotten to play against a couple of them and i definitely think he's gonna be a force um maybe not you know like way way up there like some characters have been but definitely gonna be a force and definitely gonna be someone to look out for and for sure has some tricks up his sleeve with that shield even with his 5u like early on i've I got got by that 5U a lot. I'm like, oh, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, I got him. And then I take like 45% because he counters it all the way back at me. Dude, my favorite thing about that move is when someone's doing the standing unique, right? With a vein, it's like, okay, I'm going to super you. And they do it. And then he doesn't die from it. And then he returns in kind, basically super amount of damage. Yeah. So he, he'll take anything, literally anything in the world besides like a grab. There is a Twitter clip of Avatar oh. Belial doing his like extended B and B on a five viewing Vane and Vane one shotting him in return. It's so funny. Speaking of Belial though, oh. yo, and oh, of patches, we're gonna see Nier versus Belial. Oh, oh. Scout sticking with the Nier. I like to see this. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit before, Ousty. You said Nier still quite strong, and I agree with that. She still got mm. everything she needs to win a match. She still does an incredible amount of damage. She still has her like high low off of her, her combo situations. The only thing that she's going to be missing out on from this patch from before is 6XL, of course, and combo off of her reversal. Yeah, um, uh, that's such a big one, right? Because a lot of Nier's, a lot of people that were complaining about Nier was just about that reversal being one of the strongest reversals in the game. Now it's yep. one of the weakest because you don't get yeah. anything off of it and it's a parry that you can kind of bait out and spot dodge similar to like Loane. Yep, it's parry. You don't get Oki off of it, even if it connects. And yeah, you don't get that combo off of it. Larry coming out of the corner with the DP. Scout not of... afraid to use the reversal, though, even though it may be nerfed. Yeah, you know, we're just going to be able to throw that out. Might be just some habits, too, on top of that. Not be able to dish out any of that sort of damage. But we're spending the BP to regain it right back with the Skybound out here from uh, S Scout. Now, this character is still in a really good spot. Both these characters. Oh, definitely. Delisle, very much so. Uh, oh, okay. Whiffs the combo. It does scout. Lowry trying to find a way in with these projectiles. A little bit of a little bit of death zoning from Scout. Going to get the full raging strike combo there to finish it off. Uh, that that U uh, spin from Death also did get a change. The hitbox does not show up behind the doll anymore. Um, but when the doll is coming from behind you, that doesn't matter, as we yeah. saw in the last set. It's definitely something you gotta be on the lookout for, but what helps with that is you can actually like roll right through it. If the uh, the, the yes. unique death is coming through, you spin spin to win, you can just roll right through. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. There's that parry coming out one more time. You're just gonna be able to close some distance here. Yeah, Scout being uh, very good about fishing out gaps with this parry uh, and the pressure that Lowry's leaving. And this is a full combo. Oh no, 6XL not quite reaching to keep the combo going. 
Eight? Yeah, I was kind of hoping for that. The distance traveled on that from this character, it was nerfed as well, so she doesn't go as far with the 6XL. So some combos, you have to like kind of change the route. I, I'll say Scout is playing this like old Nier. I mean, I've seen yeah. so many uh, EX Misfortunes, you would think it didn't even get nerfed, and it's just Lowry's not taking 60% for it. Does get the command grab here, gonna get one more chance to get the hit. Back tech will keep Scout safe. We're gonna just send Death over there. Oh, nice counter from Lowry. Living on a pixel here. DPs through the 5H. Running really low on health for both these players. Another brave counter again. You got caught by that, and then the reversal of the unique variety. We got the ultimate coming out. It's a shame that that ultimate counter uh, did not kill from Lowry, because that was a really heads-up way to deal with the uh, ultimate spin to win. Mm. Uh, just not dealing enough damage in the scramble situation afterwards, going to scout, taking game one. Air to air, going to get the knockdown. Nice confirm. Mix up. No. Yeah, Lowry says I'm not holding a mix up. Just destroy that immediately with the reversal. That was a good option, right? If, if you see uh, this character near going for the pull in with that claw, just drag the opponent right in. They can easily just like go for like a reversal or a stomp right afterwards. Ultimate Misfortune gonna get the capture there, gonna give a mix of opportunity for Scout, just gonna 6-6 six, six L in, take the plus frames. A, A, A. Oh no, with throw. Scramble situation. Okay, doing a, he's doing a good job of just like stopping deaths in its tracks temporarily, making sure that a scout can't do too much afterwards, but finally catches Lori one more time. Now we're in super low health territory. Reversal for reversal, back and forward again. Maybe another one coming. Oh, this combo, this combo kills, excuse me. Uh, Lowry going to get the uh, significant hit there into the super skybound art. Man, not, even the first round him, of the set. not even gonna give him the animation, you know? Don't even need it. Now we're coming right back Keeping the into momentum. the match. So something that you'll be noticing a lot is SS Scout's playing really aggressive as this near. So like sometimes you should just be running like completely full screen and Lori has to like respond with something in kind. Yeah, for sure. And it's all it's still scary when near is running at you because she may go into the 6XL. She may go into an ultimate skill with death. Uh, full combo here from Lowry is going to get a hard knockdown off of this Skybound Art in the corner, dragged all the way there. Wings out. Safe jump. Ooh, tries, tries to spot. dodge the Brave counter. Yeah, doesn't quite get it. Was definitely looking for like any sort of like retaliation coming towards you. 6XL hit into a grab. Punch. A, A. Oh, didn't do the EX though. Isn't going to be able to get the kill here, but a meaty 5L. Not sure what Scout was looking for there. Did not find it. Lowry coming back strong game two. That gonna be able to even up that score. Uh, Scout showing that, you know, near still really good, has a lot of good tools and still sticking with the character. I'm actually a big fan of people sticking with near because it's like, yeah, I just like this character, man. Yeah, absolutely. And like nothing, you know, nothing to really feel missing out on. She's definitely still fine mm -hmm. as Scout is demonstrating here. Unfortunately, Lowry is gonna get a big combo here. EX at Asmodeus, probably a super here as well. There's the combo never ends. Does get the super to end it. This will be a safe jump. We might see a grab here because of Nier's parry reversal. Might come back to bite her. Oh, went for it and Scout was ready for it. Yeah, the safe jump right afterwards could easily go for the grab, but one more 6-6L six, six into the far medium. Gonna be able to stuff out any sort of frame traps coming your way. Come on, now match point Lowry made the adjustments needed. Probably looking out for these reversals a little bit more, taking the approach that will beat them. Fortunately, 6-6L six, six, is not one of those approaches. Oh my gosh, that good stop block. one more time. It's such a good tool in this matchup, right? But just because of, you can kind of react when death's gonna come out if you just kind of take a look at near herself. Oh, we're blocking that reversal. Now, something that's gonna be happening is you will notice the ultimate reversal from near coming out way more often now. Right, that's gonna be like her true reversal option that gets a good knockdown and gets Oki. And yeah, but when blocked, it will be punished. Lowry getting a small punish on the initial hit here, but taking it all the way with this Skybound Art again. Four for four, I think. Oh, not quite dead. Excuse me. Still being able to live the dream. Going to go for another ultimate reversal. We've got a soft knockdown. we got some meter to play with on top of that. But the head stop, the oh. Goomba stop one more time. Stopping death in its track. That's going to be Lowry taking the set two to one over S-Scout. Going to move on through the winner sides of thing here in the pools. Man, good match. Yeah, good match. And I, I like I like the adaptation Lowry took. Just uh, it was a couple things coming from Scout that I noticed besides the reversal. A lot of like two you to try to mash out of situations. We saw it in I think this game where Lowry would just step back, look for the two you, 
and then try to whiff punish it with 6xl he did a really good job of that so good stuff to lowry moving on with the belial i think belial is really strong in uh, post patch as well i don't think he needed 6xl as much as maybe mm -hmm. some of the other cast and he also has buttons that after even the nerf 6xl will still reach and keep plus frames like 2m particularly yeah, and I, I was looking at the balance patch just to be safe with him. Belial was barely changed. Uh, they just yep. they they fixed something that was a little like animation bug on one of his command grabs, and that's about it. So, not even like a reduced distance on six six L. Like homie is kind of playing exactly the same. Yep. And and he has the five frame uh, two L, uh, which a lot a lot of the cast doesn't. So like after a new six six L, he has kind of a longer reaching close normal basically right yeah. like it's yeah so that that's something he can use to contest after 6xl rps on top of that dangerous dangerous 2m dude when he crouching mediums you <laughs> it's oh, yeah. a low has long distance it's plus on block like homie homie's got some footsies in him oh he's living the dream when he does that he even so much so that he usually just does another one right after <laughs> yeah he's just like oh I, I did it it hit a block I'm sending it again. Yeah, so nice, I'll do it twice. <laughs> Ooh, I'm excited for this one. We have Callisto coming up Yo. versus Small Prophet. And I'm excited for this because Catalina is another one of the winners of this patch. Yes, absolutely. Uh, a lot of the stuff that got changed with her uh, was, especially in my opinion, was the ultimate fireball, right? The mm -hmm. ultimate fireball, like if it hits, you can now get a follow up after it, which before was either not impossible, was pretty much impossible i think or if you could get something off of it it was very small or minor yep and then also the just the ex fireball if you don't want to spend the meter uh will pop up and then you get 5h into thrust which will corner carry or if you're in the corner give you a full corner combo and also got that far light you know what i'm saying she you can't like uh, avoid it as much from the crouching meanwhile looking at low wayne Barely touched. Uh, he, he His far light, just like Catalina, got fixed. And that's about it. He remains top one. Oh, the match has ended. That's how <laughs> that's how quick Loane kills you. And it's like, you know what? I think I lost that mini game, so let's go to game two. <laughs> um, yeah, not sure uh, quite what happened there. But uh, do, we, do we need another minute? Is that what happened? Maybe just had some settings that were incorrect, whatever have you. But while we wait for this next set, guys, you know, we, we're going to keep plugging this all day. You can visit oh, yes. the exclamation point, Matcherino, click claim code. You already know the drill. Add some money towards that pop. We get up to $50. That means we can uh, be able to pay out top. Oh, sorry. If we get $150, we could pay out top four. That's something we always want to try to like feed up as many people as possible. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We have a pretty good record uh, with Grand Blue, especially of getting to these higher stretch goal payouts uh do know that all the money that is contributed through codes any kind of sponsor quests merch sales or direct contributions will go to the players at the end of the event so yeah we want to get as many of them paid as possible as Osti said and yeah we can't do that without y'all so please claim those codes please make some contributions and help us out you know wazzy online has been like uh, one of the longest running uh grand blue online tournaments too or just anime online tournaments in general like keeping the consistent weekly all the times whether it's uni multi uh grand blue uh, what have you but like i think we're at uh, grand blue rising in particular is definitely at like the long longest uh, amount of brackets so far i don't think there is any other 16 brackets for rising no yeah and i mean you just talk about in general uh, we were talking about this the other day we've been doing this four years now <laughs> consistent online tournaments yeah started in 2020 so uh, i remember uh wasd coming to osnyc way back in the day like like when it was like some of their first on uh in-person tournaments oh yeah those were i remember those those were good times <laughs> all right so we are back in it uh it's all profit callisto so Luane cat i feel like this might be good for Luane. i feel like Luane can keep cat out in a way that's that's fairly favorable for him um but i don't know how new cat will function in that world so oh we got both the shiny weapons here too i feel like the game plan's still gonna be kind of the same for catalina it's just like she gets to be able to dish out more damage on fireballs as well as you know being able to get some more confirms off her far lights so we might be seeing a lot more of that in the future but out the gate you know lowane he's that type of character we're just gonna be throwing everything in the kitchen sink at you you just gotta be able to wreck, dude. I, I don't know if you're getting distracted, but seeing the brothers with the aura. Oh yeah, this. 
<laughs> the shine, the, <laughs> the glitter trail behind them. Yeah, it's it's quite distracting. And Salt Prophet using that to full effect with the glowy corn as well. Gets the bro pyramid overhead. Ooh, no uh, no diamonds for Callisto to a throw might even kill here. Full pressure from Salt Prophet. Definitely Ooh. looking for some low action there, but calls the bros in both at the same time. Going to be able to take away that first game. Yeah, looking like a lot of potentially overwhelming pressure from all of the things that Soul Prophet is putting on the screen. Callisto not able to get anything started, and as soon as he does, he just gets met with a parry or gets met with an EX Awesome Sauce. Run and run out. Smash Bros. Oh, Definitely trying to bait out, so it looks like he's dash dancing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, oh, 5L from Callisto on the way out says, I am not going to hold this pressure anymore. Dashes right into the parry, though. Yeah, uh, parries can be option selected, but not with 6XL. Oh, EX Perry that time not making purchase. Gonna use the Raging Strike to get this all as close to the corner as possible. Just missing the bounce. Tick throw. Empty jump, baits the throw. Dude, that's so good. But here's the combos we're talking about. Gonna be able to get a lot of confirms off of it. I think that could have gone extended if we wanted to spend more meter, but actually Callisto was out. Yeah, I do. That is the case there. I think that was a very much an intentional drop, trying to get a throw reset there to see if he could take Salt Prophet down in one more interaction. Oh no, Ooh. Callisto wanted to go for the Brave Counter, but there was a little bit of a delay there catching the Brave Counter, uh, the Raging Strike instead. It is quite tough Callisto. versus projectiles to Brave Counter in this game. There's like a much smaller window on those to get that Brave Counter. And I think the missile was actually what made contact with Callisto there. Hey, gets the extension. No pressure. Some, Devin was looking for some whiff punishing action there, but Callisto. Wasn't giving it up just yet. Coming right back with the Loane brothers. More projectiles coming your way. Thought to go for a spot dodge, but now you're stuck in the left side. Ooh, uses the 5U to get out of there. Jumps over, not quite punishing the lift throw. Glowing bros coming in. Trying to dodge the brave counter there with Salt Prophet with those missiles coming in to back it up, keep it safe. Oh no, this is the big one, right? You just kind of throw this out, it becomes a reaction game. You get caught by it once and you are done for. I'm pretty sure what you're supposed to do there is hold crouching back and then react to the overhead. I've heard the, both ways. Way I've also tried both ways and I always get owned. So <laughs> I always like, get hit. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an answer. Oh, brave counter bait there with a the run up fireball from Callisto. Very nice move, but unfortunately, that was cheap. That throw was invisible. <laughs> there was missiles, there was bros, they're all shining. I was cheap. I'm the, calling it. And, and hindsight, online, you can change the settings on your side of things to turn off shiny weapons if you want. So, yeah. you know, if, you, if, you, if the shininess kind of distracts you, you can turn it off at least. Nice full combo here into the Raging Strike, Raging Chain. Two hits. Full extension. Going to get the standing reset. Dodging the DP. Soul Prophet, very nice move. Oh God, close heavy. He's gonna cash out so much damage. He has some meter to play with. Ops to go for a reset with punish action. Knew it wasn't gonna kill. Sends both those brothers flying. Get out of my face. Another missile throw and then 6XL to finish the job. Soul Prophet looking dominant in this Loane versus Catalina matchup. I just noticed those weapons are corn. Yes, it's corn and uh, fish. And the big one's like a squid. Like when he does his raging strike, it's a big squid. I wouldn't trust that. I would not eat. I would not consume. No, it's the food it's that's package. Like that. It's package is like no GMOs, but it's like fluorescent. Yeah, I don't know. Is that I don't what know if I trust like that. To have no preservatives in your food. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 a superfood in more ways than one. Oh, Lennox, thank you for the gift sub. Congratulations, Rot Gut Versus, for the gift sub, courtesy of Big Lennox. Yo, that's my go. Lennox, hope you've been doing well, brother. Uh, if you guys are just now tuning in, welcome to Grand Blue, open number 16 of WASD. We got tons of matches coming your way. We got a brand new patch. We got a brand new character. I've yet to see him. And honestly, I feel like we're not going to see him today, if I'm being real, just because I feel like Vayne's going to take a little bit more work than, say, like, 2B, when 2B came out, 2B was pretty straightforward of a character. Vayne takes a little bit more getting used to. So what? Yep. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe we'll see some Vayne's. Yeah, I'd love to see one, but it's kind of a crapshoot day two of the character. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, a lot of other fun stuff to play with in this patch. A lot of people going back to their old mains from vanilla. A lot of people going back to the character that they dropped because they picked up Nier instead. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of characters cool. that we're seeing here. Yeah. 
Hey man, you, you don't hate the game or don't hate the player, hate the game. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's the thing is, we love this game, so we're actually doing pretty okay, here, especially no. with this new patch. But coming up next, we're gonna have Diva versus Ranachu. Okay, Diva with the oh, wait, still... Ranachu has the vein. Vein avatar spotted. Vein avatar spotted. Are you playing Vein Ranachu? I think Walk Diva's in. playing six, right? No, Sieg. It looks like. Oh, yeah, okay. a little bit of a swap. Okay, I mean, Siegfried, very good pick on top of that. Yeah, we're going to see the Vayne. Let's go! Hey. I love this character. Been grinding Vayne for, like, all day today. A little Already bit masters night. with Vayne is Ron uh, yeah. Damn. He's been grinding more than me! He yeah. probably didn't sleep! <laughs> yeah, that that's a, a Herculean effort there. Level 150 with the master rank already so if we're gonna see some stuff we're definitely gonna see it from ronichu here deva on the siegfried dragon knight battle let's get it yeah that's right canonical training going on here uh so this character vane has got a lot of tools in his kit these are the two biggest tools you just saw right he can throw out the shield which takes a hit for him if he's like near it and then he's got that big big boy swing the explosion driver or uh, uh, just that one Whew. and you can just be able to hit them from so far away yeah, very, very good. I think, like you said, Vayne not as straightforward as someone maybe like to be, but his tools are pretty straightforward in how they should be used. And uh, that that Aegis Reflector, as I'm going to call it, is definitely a really strong one here. Okay, easy, simple combo. Oh my goodness gracious, spend it all? Dude, I mean, if you're going to die for it, we spend it all. That's my Ryan B &B choose, like, right hey, listen, I, I have to laugh any combos with the character, bro. I'm just going to I'm just gonna Raging Strike over and over. Ooh, slide in, 60M, very nice. And here we can put the rate Aegis down on the opponent's wake up to prevent any kind of reversal attempt. Especially with not me quite doing that. Especially with meter, because if you get a hard knockdown, if you put the ultimate version down, it has three hitboxes on it. They can't do anything out of it. You can bait out a DP. If you're blocking, they just kind of have to hold it. It's very, very reminiscent of like charge stun edge from Kai. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. It makes like throw very, very strong. Good hit from Diva here though. And get the super with the cinematic. Take away the diamond. Um, baits the guard cancel the big 5h raging strike finisher yeah this is something that vane can kind of struggle with though is once he's put in the corner he doesn't have access to a meterless reversal he can do a standing unique which gives him infinite armor but it's easily baitable if you see it coming it's basically like a gigantic knowledge check so you can't rely on it forever yeah i don't think we'll see too much of that maybe today but i don't think outside of that that's going to be a commonly used tool I like this though, setting up from full screen with the uh, mirror as well as the big explosion driver, just trying to keep Diva out. Because once Diva's in, this is what we've been seeing in this matchup. Yeah, so that's like the ideal distance for Vayne, right? Ronnie Chu trying to keep him at like max distance so he can land all of those energy explosions, putting the shield in front of you to try to block any sort of approach or block the fireball in the process. But now Diva's just running amok. Back throw left and right, kind of missed me up. Where are you going to go? But good bait on that Brave counter. Just going to go for the simple jump, cashing it on the super skybound art. And this is going to do a decent amount of damage, but I don't think it's going to be able to kill just yet. Straight to the moon with you. That actually did much less than I thought it would. And you're going to need one more good hit because the throw won't even do it here for Ronnie Chu. Dodges through. That was such a bold dodge. And it ends up working out with the dash H to finish out. Very nice from Ronnie Chu. I think something that we'll be seeing a lot more often in Grand Blue is just spot dodges and rolls in general. Purely because now you can spot dodge through 6-6-L and get a punish. So it's definitely going to be on a lot more people's radars for defense measures. 5L confirm. Oh, just another dash up 5L on the drop combo there. Probably didn't have the cooldown that he was looking for. Hey, hey, hey. get off me. Yeah, we'll we confirm. Just we just mash out of there. So the thing is that shield only has one hit. So if you manage to go for a multi hit projectile like a EX fireball, it will go through. It slows it down. You're able to react to it a little bit earlier, but doesn't stop it altogether. Yeah, I have seen that EX fireball being the answer almost like towards uh, Lancelot's projectiles is if you can just throw an EX fireball out there to contest it, you get your space back. Seeing back some 6 l action here from Ronnie Chu, trying to open him up right back at you from D.Va. We're just going to spend it on the meter. Get off of me. Reversal coming in clutch. XDP. Oh, no. The sweep into the super from D.Va. Just believing and confirming that second hit into Skybound Art. Yeah. Catching the frame trap on that Brave counter. Putting a little bit of a delay before that sweep so we could actually, you know, catch that out. The 6-6-M catching the feats. Something I haven't seen from Ronnie Chu yet that's actually really good on Vayne is uh, 6 6 H. That move is funny. Homie just spins forever. 
Yeah, I only seen it in combos up to this point, but uh, seems like a move that you can really throw out there as a means to just like kind of feel out the water, see if your opponent's matching something. Nice two H hit. Do we get more of these? A A A. If Big there is combo. one thing Vayne can do, he can anti air combo the crap out of you, whether it's a counter hit or not. He can cash out a lot of damage on a non counter hit one too. Seeing in chat, 66H is only minus six. Yeah, it's cheap. That's messed up. It also <laughs> I mean, it pushes you back, too, so that you can't reach with the close light whatsoever. Yeah, space that out, and you are golden. Not going to be golden in the corner here, Zarni Chu. 5L on the dragon install. Frame trap situation. Whoa! Saved by the laser away. there. Didn't get the, the uh, Didn't get the cutscene on it, but that's okay. We hit it from that far away. Coming right back in, sweeps for days. Easiest conversion because it's a double hit on the sweep, and we're gonna be able to close out that another game here from Diva. That will put us at 1-1 one, one here. Yeah, evening up the score. Looking for this final game in this race to two. 2M, Fireball, is EX though, gonna be able to bust right through that. Ooh, not quite the confirm you were used to for Diva. A little bit farther away on that 6XL. 505H trying to frame trap. Ryan Chu standing strong on defense. Gonna set up the mirror. Ooh. Oh, the shimmy trying to bait it out. Gonna go for the uh, ultimate shield just to apply some more pressure. Leaves you hella block right afterwards if you're just trying to go for that. And we bait out the 2H with the dive kick. We just come right down with the slash. Nice, gonna get this full combo here. Spending a little bit on the raging strike. Probably a super to come in a moment. Gonna be one more hit for D.Va to take this round. It's a, It could be a throw, could be a low. Maybe a shimmy, maybe a bait of the brave counter. What's it going to be? Just the safe jump. The Raichu finds the answer, converts it into a Raging Strike, Raging Chain. Going to get that big combo, tries to follow up with the 6-6 elbow, relieving the pressure immediately. Re brave reversal coming out from Raichu, and a bad reversal coming out from Diva. Raichu going to steal that game that round away. Very nice from Raichu. We've seen that twice, actually. Uh, it's almost as though he's reacting to the uh, EX overhead swing with that reversal because it, it's worked twice now for him and it might just be something he's doing to get diva off of him or he's just letting it rip i mean it, it's hard to tell protect gonna reset to neutral another dive kick baiting out another anti-air attempt ex is very much punishable yeah i gotta take some damage in the process i feel like ronnie Chu is very desperate for those anti-airs but against anyone that can do something mid-air like siegfried it's very risky going for <gasps> another explosion coming back in with the jump can't get a confirm this doesn't end up biting him. He ended up going in when he had a really nice corner distance there. A really nice setup. And the scramble situation afterwards is going to result in a super for D.Va. And one more hit will do it. Save. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just runs into the fireball. Unfortunate interaction I think Ronnie Chu was feeling a little bit aggressive because he was out of BP. And, like, that's, like, pretty much Vayne's, like, saving grace to get out of the corner. Or getting out of, like, these block strings is having access to a brave counter. Sure. Dash L, 2M. 2M doing a lot of work for D.Va here in this matchup. For it, keep the distance. Oh no, Siegfried's Fireball is blessed. Even the regular one will go through uh, your mirrors. With throw, oh, punish! That was actually really tough. I know exactly what happened to Rottitude, dude. Vayne's like, visual is really big, so you actually think you're close enough with him because of his shoulders, but you're actually not close enough to get the grab. It's very, it happens to me all the time with this character. He and is a wide fellow. That sucks, because now D.Va's going to be able to steal that away right at the very end and take away the set two to one. Going to move on with the classic Siegfried. Yeah, very nice. Uh, Ryan's you looking strong, though. Uh may see him pop up again in our top eight losers uh that was for i think top that was to i'm looking at the wrong pool that was not to get into top 24 though i think that was one away oh, so still really early on in the bracket we got matches like these man yeah certainly a stacked bracket we've got going on here and i'm seeing some of the other competitors that we have going to be coming up here for potential top 24 Qualifiers, Coach Steve, Senpai Spider, have a nice day. Uh, we saw Gabagool earlier, still in winners, mm -hmm. trucking along.
some really good players coming up to deck here. Excited to see what Ronnie Chu is going to bring to the table in the future because that was only a day one vein and we saw what he was already cooking. Imagine when we get some refinement in there and some time to actually sit down with the character. Very excited to see what he's going to be able to do in the future. Yeah, very much so. And I think I think something we might end up seeing more with Vayne is just more... Like, he's big, he's bulky, it looks like you want to get in, but, like, his best moves are, like, half-screen moves. Like, the big explosion driver, setting up the shield. Even the, like, um, the the thing that's, like, Zeta 5U, I'm not sure if that's his 2 on 4 or his 2 3 6. Um, the, the multi-stabs. Like, that. that's a good, like, keep-out type move that, that stays pretty safe if you're using the light version. Mm. Can you walk through his shield or can he kind of do like yes. a dnf crusader thing where he can like oh god don't no no no, no uh, not uh, absolutely uh, not no <laughs> the shield is simply there to take a hit uh uh for vein you can walk through it oh, okay. you, can inter okay. you don't have to interact with it you can actually 66l through it kind of so like depending on when you activate the 66l if you get past the shield with it it'll actually hit the hit the vein Okay, that makes sense. Yep. I was like, damn, somebody's gonna find like a, a roll through setup with that and it's oh gonna be degenerate. God. PTSD, I mean... much like <laughs> coming right back with it. Got flashbanged by DNF. I did not expect that to happen to me on a Wednesday night. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys saw, but both. Oh, dang up. Never mind. Oh, they're Come in. Right, oh, Hubert versus Wee. I don't know who I expected Wee to play. Besides Charlotta, I don't is think anyone else <laughs> with that tag could play this character. Could play a different character. The perfect tag for a Charlotta man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but Hubert on the Belial, we've seen a Belial tonight already. I see a couple other Belials in the winner's uh, run-up of this top 24 side. So I think we might see a lot of Belial tonight. But we wants to make one fewer in winners. Very nice frame trap to get started. Yeah, going right out the gate. Now, this character is obviously just, like, aggro central. She wants to get in. She wants to rush down and then try to mix you up with the Noble Strategy. Noble Strategy being that mix-up move, when she jumps up into the air and can do four different things, whether it's a high, low, straight hit, or a command grab. We got the Wheeze in the chat, as well as Gucci Blunt Rap with the resub for three months. Thank you so much, Gucci Blunt Rap. Yo, what's good, Gucci? See that you are still in winners as well, cooking as usual with the UL, but, but now we gotta get back on this one because we is actually out of bravery points. No oh my more gosh. Oh at no. disposal. This is scary. We come back in, catches the reversal. This is spaghetti. This is spaghetti becoming... all over. Oh my gosh. Went for the ultimate wheel again. And then uh, Hubert taking full advantage of that with the zero BP. Every one of those hits was a freaking chunk and taking down we. Uh, oh. After ultimate ball, you usually just see another ultimate ball. So I think that was a missed input from Wii, unfortunately. Yeah. In, in terms of the balance, yeah, Charlotte wasn't changed. Like, none of her combo routes were changed. Uh, the only thing that changed was her ultimate holy ladder now can hit a little bit easier on people that try to cross her up on it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you can't slight, over it. Is slight baby buff for her. Yep, still largely the same. There's a big uh, ultimate wheel into the noble strategy. Going to get DP'd by Hubert. Walk up. Ooh, reversal throw. Big up time. Something that's really good about Charlotta too is her jumping. Just jumping in general. It's so fast. It has you can do some really awkward angles that make it very difficult at 2H. I really like this approach from Hubert though. Every time he sees Charlotta leave the ground, he's like, no, reversal, reversal, reversal. I do not want to hold anything. And it's working out pretty well in the previous round. So so far here as well. Gotta watch for the holy ladder. Mm -hmm. Oh! Dude, another projectile coming at that needle. You gotta be on the lookout for. Drags you in for the combo. Super Skybound are getting you with the kicks. That Loose wasn't cinematic. close enough. Uh oh. Command grab. Not gonna quite do enough. The BP was there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh. I, did. I don't think Huber did a spot dodge specifically for Raging Strike. No, that was way before. The Raging Strike came out. That spot dodge is coming out probably to dodge a wheel or to dodge some kind of shenanigans. Yep. But 6 6 L. the Camp Lazlo sound effect did hit the Raging Strike anyways, and <laughs> Hubert did take the round. Yeah, shout outs to Jen for that name. Put it in my head like four months ago, and I've never let it go. And now it lives there rent free. Yeah, very much so. Okay. Hey. So Charlotta does have a lot of stubby normals, but they're not that stubby. Some of these far heavies, far mediums can reach pretty, pretty far than what you think. And it's really good for stuffing out any sort of like dash approaches on top of that. 
for sure. She can she can reach and. One thing we're seeing is after the EX uh, 100 hands the, from Wii, not getting that standing M link, and that's really costing them a lot of damage. Chance here. Oh, oh that hurts. Oh, no, that's going to be big on that bait. Close heavy. We're cashing it out with the BP on top of that. We still got meter for one more ultimate if we so choose, or one more hit on top of that. Wii's on the defensive. We wheel out of there. We just spin. <laughs> Jumps into the corner. Uh, Hubert actually in a bad spot here. Tries the Brave counter out. Gets the... 5L on run up a little too antsy from Wii. And Hubert on match point now. Hubert looking really strong with the Belial. We need something to uh, cook up here if they want to be able to stand a chance and take a little bit longer in the winner side of things. Yep, full combo as usual into the corner. 5L, frame trap. 6 xl with punish, very nice. Yeah, give me that shoulder tackle. Turn it into a bravery, a raging strike. Get that combo confirmed and you're gonna reveal. Oh, we're not gonna go for the refund, okay. Grand Blue Zone established. We slowly busting their way out of it using the Holy Ladder. Maybe gets the other side. <gasps> Just fall short of meeting with that 6XL. The reversal coming through. Dude, Hubert has been spending his resources very aggressively and now is on the defensive with only one more BP. Calling out normal strategy one more time. Opting to go for the reversal. <laughs> Going for the dash <laughs> kick. Big 6-6-H. Six, six uh, yeah. <laughs> not the easiest thing in the world to punish, and, and we not doing so. And then just point blank, 2L2L gets it for Hubert. The match ended. Yep. Hubert going to take that 2-0, move on through the pool side of things, getting inching ever so closer to that fabled top eight winner side of things. You know a lot of these players were eyeing that juicy spot. Oh, yeah. Top eight in this bracket. I mean, with a bracket of this caliber, make it top eight. Definitely something you want to see yourself doing. And if you get far enough, you do get a piece of the prize pool as well. We have a match arena for this event that will come up right after these replays are done. There it is. Uh, if you want to make a contribution, we have fewer than 36 codes left. This is uh, frozen on an old cache or something because we have more than 350 in the pot. We've actually used quite a bit of these codes. Um, so once we get a refresh on that, we'll let you know how we're doing. But we do have more for sure, as long as that's below. There we go. 23 codes remaining. Uh, so once that is zero, we will have contributed all the free money. And the rest will be on you if you want to make a direct contribution or buy some merch farther down on the page. That'll all go to the prize pool. As you can see, we have some stretch goals. $150 will be a top four payout. And $320 will be a top six payout. So if you want more folks to get paid out, make a contribution to the match arena. No, I see what Tarek's trying to do, man. You you keep that pool like, oh, it's only we've only redeemed four codes. Oh, woe is us. I see what you're trying to do, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got I got your strategy, man. And I, I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> I feel like you could go the other way too. You could put up like a fake, like, oh, three codes left, and it's like, guys, only three <laughs> codes left. Come on, get in there. Just finish it off. It's almost done. Like and they go and they're like, that never end. They're Guys, like 25. We have, what? We have $149. One more dollar to top. Yeah. <laughs> give people a dollar. Like my dad used to do that. He's like, I only have $3 in my wallet. And he did that for like 10 years. Oh my God. <laughs> Raising a whole family on $3. That's miraculous. What a, I what a man. I see where you get it from. I see where you get it from. <laughs> like father, like son. <laughs> All right, I, we got I don't know if you guys... What's uh, up? But both uh, K Tang and Hazel fell to losers. Huh? Played each other in losers, and Hazel's out. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> yeah, in pool two. What he happened? Narmaya was barely touched. Know. Like, what happened? And three seed playing what? losers round three. That's unprecedented. Narmaya, which Hazel? They got third at crossover arc. Like, that is. Uh, whew. Hate to see it happen. Yeah, I just looked it up. Armaya, her 6XL go, doesn't go as far. That's it. Right. That, that, yeah. Her 6XL game plan is a little bit different, but other than that, like, she's still the same. But uh, also, Katang, dude, an Armaya army. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and now has to play Makona and losers to get out to the top 24. Big path ahead of them. Looks like the next matches we're going to see for the next couple are all top 24 qualifiers, though. So we nice. have Threx versus Gucci Blunt Rap, which is the one that's coming up here. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to see some UL for sure. Um, and then on the other side of this, if Start GG will Senpai load Senpai versus me. Gabagool. Oh, Senpai Spider versus Gabagool. That'll be a cool Yo. one. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. So Senpai Spider, we saw, of course, on the Matera. Historically, mm -hmm. always played Matera. Played a little bit of 2B in the first version of this patch. 
um, and also historically has played Uno, Andre. And I read Andre's patch notes, and I'm like, I, what does this mean? It's 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 all Greek <laughs> to me. Like I don't I don't even know what this character does. Rakshasa something something. I don't know what he does. Uh so I'd like to see if it was a buff, if Senpai Spider would return to that character or have him in the pocket as as he used to. Yeah, I I barely looked at Uno's patches because I just don't see that character anymore. And like, there's a lot <laughs> written here, but like, there's a lot of words. Just, I just like, I need. <laughs> I'm a, I'm stupid. I need a video <laughs> put in front of me. <laughs> I need like here was patch uh 1.22. Here is patch 1.3. Look at them be different. Ooh, uh, like I I'm like I'm like yeah. a, a four year old. Like I need I need the video in front of me. I can't read these words, bro. This is too much. I, I, I need- grew up on Twitter where it's limited to 140 letter uh, oh. letters. Uh, <laughs> tweet or it used to be anyways i need the old one too because i don't even remember what that character used to do so if they just showed me new <laughs> ultimate fireball i'd be like ah yes ah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> what did the old one do again oh yeah. we got so we got Ooh. um so gucci blunt rap uh got oh. top five at bum's birthday bash over the weekend uh using uh ul yes uh historically a uh, ul main i'm pretty sure that's gucci on on the left because it is. she has messed with uh Anil, uh, Anil in, in the past, that's why I got a little confused, but no, she's definitely sticking with the UL this time around. Yep, UL looking good. Did get a 60 cell range nerf, as some others did, um, but still, again, largely the same. Anila, another big winner of the patch. Uh, we haven't talked about her yet tonight. One of the big things is her ultimate um, cheap ride, her ultimate Tutsugeki, uh, is now comboable mid screen. You get a full combo off of that, just like that this. move was already degen, and now they give you combos off of it. That is. <laughs> This is that that is definitely stocks up for Anila. Yeah, it's definitely where the players of this character want to be too. So I think we'll, I think we'll see a lot of promise from her. Gucci Blunt Rap going to take a full combo here though. One ultimate skill, just one. Saves 50 meter. Uh oh. Right yeah, you'll see a lot of UL's go for that, and uh, if you're not ready for it, you're just gonna have to hold the block string or the hit. But you saw Threx was playing on the aggressive instead of passive. Saw it come in their way and opted to go for a punish right afterwards. And worth worth mentioning that does give you a combo now, but it is now no longer safe on block. That is a full ass punish if you block that. Yeah, so good luck. Yeah, just don't just don't get hit. Uh full corner combo here from Gucci Blunt Rap. Stance mix up. Ooh! -hoo! I got thrown. That was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the something that Gucci's really good at doing is with this character is definitely like being in their face and just like st uh, going for the stance mix-up where like you can't hit them from high without getting countered. What is this damage? Dude, corner this to corner, forty-five percent from Threx. Bro, I told you, Nihilus stocks are up and it's looking very promising. This character's got a lot more tools than just ultimate sheep, right? Like she's got like one of the longest sweeps in the game, but Gucci's had enough of this. Opting to go for the Skybound art in as a retaliation. Rex baits it out, gets the block, and take away game number one. One more sheep for good measure. If you are liking this new Anilla, you can buy an Anilla mug at Imperis.club. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, good bait. I like that. Kid, uh, kidding, not kidding. Uh, Gucci Run, I'm going to start this round too. Looking, um, I mean, it, this is a battle of aggression here, and it's Threx coming out on top just with a pure damage. Gucci Blunt Rap, maybe you're going to have to slow it down and use some of these longer range normals like 2M, 5M to, to get things started. It could be kind of a struggle to get in on a character like this because of her severely long range. Like, that, that spear can go forever, whether it's a far heavy or a sweep. You just got to kind of be on the lookout for it. But all Gucci needs to do is find the aggressive option, finds the answer. We might be able to get a kill off this. Yeah, I wall think bounce. We have enough resources. Oh, <gasps> no. Uh-oh. And you have zero BP. Do not get touched. This is very scary territory. Opti, just go for it. I like it. Just going for the unga and the bunga. We put some block string on you, and it's like, oh, my turn's up. Psych reversal. The the classic UL uh, Street Fighter Five tactic, slide in, B minus, DP. See it a lot working out for Gucci Blunt Wrap there. Ooh. Trying to get out of the corner with the throw, deep met with the DP. <gasps> oh no, 66H, uh, re cornering Threx. 
Incredible jump coming out from Gucci. Off you go for the BP. Do we get enough meter to spend it on the super? We <laughs> don't. You know she was looking for that refund. But this time, at least the second time at the shopping store, we'd be able to get one more refund right here, right now. Stealing one of those BP for good measure. And Threx is in a bad spot. We do have full meter and two BP to play with. But the grab was mm. not on their mind. Super down from Gucci Blunt right there. Run under, run under, full combo into SBA, into the whiff throw, whiff meaty into grab. Super clean way to close that out. Taking game two, looking for this top 24 ticket for whoever wins this. This is definitely a battle of attrition for Gucci, right? Ewell's entire game plan is you, she needs to get in there and stop all these approaches. And Threx doesn't have too many options at their disposal whenever they're on the defensive besides like a uh, meter reversal or brave counter, you know? Yeah, for sure. And uh, getting the most out of it here though, that one sheep hit super meaty on the spot dodge and of getting the wall bounce for Threx. And now Gucci Blind up with almost zero HP to work with. This is what starts it though, back throw. Oh, oh my man. goodness. Threx was at the ready, definitely sensing that Gucci was going for a Hail Mary, opt to go for a spot dodge and gets the round winning punish. Yeah, uh, you know, that's definitely an option you'll see there a lot of the time. Zero BP left, needs to do a ton of damage, and that's one way to almost guarantee it. Gucci Blunt Rap going for it, not succeeding. I don't think she's the type of player who would be dissuaded by that, though. Looking still really confident going into this round, too. Yeah, showing that she's still got that mental, but Threx is definitely on the aggressive. Finally Oops. calls out the dash, turning it into a raging chain just to dish out a lot of damage in the process. Not enough meter to play with afterwards too, but we are climbing, wall bouncing. We got meter now, spending it on the Raging Strike one more time to get as much damage as possible. This is not gonna kill, but puts you in a really bad spot. Very nice mix up afterwards too. Gucci Blunt Rap running almost the full health bar off of all that, and now even has a reversal to kill if Threx oversteps with anything. Oversteps or sheep, oversteps to 6XL. This oh is death. Oh my God, are you dead? Are yeah. you dead off that? Oh my no goodness, the way. six H to finish. The sheep throwing the hands in the air, cheering on Anila. Threx going on to top 24, winner's side over Gucci Blunt Rap. Taking those buffs personally. Take it. This, that happened last patch. Like that, we would still be in there, bro. Oh, for sure. This was all by virtue of this yeah, ultimate sheep charge. Good lord. I mean, to be honest, the matchup does look a little bit struggle bus for Yule from a long distance. Anytime that Gucci Blunt Rap was far away, it just felt like Threx was at the most comfortable position ever, right? Because but at a long distance, you have access to so many long-ranging normals. You have access to sheep, ultimate sheep. Uh, the world's your oyster at that point. So yeah, it, it can be kind of a struggle to get in. UL with nothing disjointed as well, like a fireball or something to say, like, I'll stop the sheep from coming in. You only have attacks that use, you know, your direct hitbox. So that, that, that makes it tough, too. Speaking of tough, this one might be tough. Senpai Spider versus Gavagool. Uh, I, I gotta say something about this matchup, dude, because I've seen this before. The, uh, we were just talking about bad matchups. This is a bad matchup. Yeah. If, if Senpai goes Matera, this is like... I, I don't know how to explain. When you have no meter against Matera as a grappler, you just kind of have to hold that until you get 50 meter. You need yep. the 50 meter to get anything started. Otherwise, neutral is just like, I'm spamming arrow and there's nothing you can do. This is bad and long because Matera will not quickly kill Ladiva either. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so it's going to be a lot of running away, a lot of placing arrows. But th there is, you know, there's the Ladiva factor. If, if Gabagool can get in or get one nice to you on Senpai Spider, Matera doesn't really have the tools to get uh, someone off of her. Is that 2B? Oh, okay. I always thought this matchup was quite bad for uh, Lativa as well. Uh, 2B with really long-range normals, tons of projectiles, the gravity effect. There's a lot of things that... And Senpai is saying, I don't care that this character was nerfed. I'm still going to play. Yeah, the biggest nerf for her was that skill gauge not charging as fast anymore. So you can't be as degen with a lot of those skills whenever you're, like, playing mad aggressive. If you're in the middle of, like, block stringing, it charges at, like, a snail's oh. pace. That's something we're gonna see a lot too. If you can dodge a six uh, XL with the uh, with the f the four U, excuse me, uh, that recovers longer, and you get a much bigger punish. You actually get a five M punish now if you want as to be okay. Hold this, and Senpai historically has oh that was so sick dodging the roll with the charge baseball bat. 
But uh, Senpai, historically a zoner player on the 2B here. I think that's how this character is supposed to be played. I think she should be played lame as heck. Uh-oh, hold on. I mean, Gabagool getting the 5H. Especially with the nerfs, I think it's just kind of encouraging for her to play a little bit more passive, right? Because of the skill gauge change. Like, if you're playing, if you're playing from the back and you're kind of not pushing any buttons, it charges normally. It's only when the block string when you're getting like nothing off of it. Oh yeah, agreed. Especially post patch, but I think even pre patch, this is where she wanted to be. Even in matchups that you know you don't really want to zone your front. Wow, that was so unfortunate for Gabagool there. Uh, getting that ultimate lariat just chopped by that 5M. Yeah, I, th I think to be with all of her projectile options and with all of her long range fast normals, she she's a zoner at heart. Her normals are also sick from a long distance because if they whiff, she can keep the combo going. It's very difficult to whiff punish her normals. Yep. And uh, this is, I mean, look at this. Look at the spacing. Senpai's holding such a sick yeah. spacing. And then as, as soon as Gabagool oversteps, Senpai doesn't even get a long combo here. Just goes MMMH, you know, just get a knockdown. Chill out. Gabagool finally finds the meter they were looking for, allows them to be able to turn the tables on him. One of our meter uh -oh. tries to bait it out, back steps into another command grab. What's the mix here? We bait out the brave counter, so we're not going to get too much off of it. Baits out the special on top of that, but no not punish. punish. Oh, and the double oh, jump baiting out the anti air. Okay, it's, it's spaghetti now. Oh, you hate to see it happen. The right idea, but the wrong execution. 2B is one of the hardest characters to get an aerial grab on from a command grab because of the access to the double jump and being able to hold on to pod. Yeah, double jump floats uh, so many ways that Senpai can play around what Gabagool is trying to do here. And cleaning that up pretty quickly uh, was, was Senpai Spider. Gabagool taking a second to think about it. Believe in victory. And it's hard. I mean, I mean, the, the real answer here is just get in. I mean, that, that is what Gabagool has to do. And Senpai is a player that's very hard to do that against. Ooh, uses the run cancel to get forward. The classic to you. Oh, a little bit too soon on that command grab. And again, for Gabagool to get in, it's very difficult because of these normals, because of these specials, until they get meter, which now they have. That can open up a lot of opportunities for them. Yeah, ultimate Lariat's on the table after that. Ultimate Headbutt to even absorb some of the hits that uh, Senpai Spider's trying to do from this mid range. Uh, unfortunately, just trying to dash forward is getting caught every time by this 5M. Senpai Spider placing his normal so well. Okay, something that's a threat now. Never mind, we're going to spend that meter before we get the 100%. Uh, but whenever Ladiva Ooh, there's has the percent cool. you can throw out the Skybound Art. Big hit. Oh, oh my. Skybound Art on the table. Come on. Very good at landing these. Oh, no, this is death, though. L, 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 hammer. Okay, okay. And just another Raging Strike, Raging Chain will take it. Very flashy way of ending it, because I'm pretty sure Senpai could have just spent all three of those diamonds and just called it. Sure. Hey, 5H doing a lot of work, and, and now Senpai Spider locking in that Gabagool is trying to do anything to interrupt what Senpai Spider is trying to do, and using that dash cancel to create new opportunities in the middle of a string. Right. On top of that, we're seeing a lot of crouching lights from Senpai to catch out those rolls, since that seems to be a very popular tool for Ladivas to get in. Full combo here. Let's see what the new route is. The old one spent a ton of skill bar. Yeah, cutting it much shorter. Oh, Fake. the baits. Fakes Fake out the brave punch. counter. Going to take a lot of damage again. Another grab. One more grab away from death. We're going to be able to go for it. No, brave counter's out. Baits out big the punish. reversal. Close, heavy, big boy punish coming out. What are we going to spend the meter on? Oh, this is the oh! same reset we saw in game one. No way. In the first, you, er, first you're match. You're not dead, right? You're not no, this dead. Is, this is not dead with one diamond. Two? It's very Two? close, though. Oh my god. Oh. Back dashes out to Senpai Spider. Hold all this. Not enough time to get in, though. And, and no skill gauge left. Yeah, that was a big difference there. Senpai had zero special moves after doing all of those. The uh, EX missiles into the ultimate bombs had no skill gauge left. Keeping an eye on that gauge from Gabagool's side, recognizing the opportunity. Ops to just go for it. Now we're back in there. Another kick. Some combos coming out. Aggressive grappler. But hey, mm. we still we still got the uh, the parry. Senpai Spider just going for the uh, built-in follow-up from the uh, unique ability from 2B. Dodging a 6XL does give you a bigger punish. Maybe just something that uh, he's not used to yet. Mm. And there is something for 2B that, like, you know, she wasn't really affected by the universal 6XL debuff because she like doesn't she, have a 6XL. She didn't, she didn't have one, so yeah. that's <laughs> uh, definitely not in Senpai Spider's wheelhouse to be playing like that, but certainly something to think about with the character. Big ultimate lariat, big gamble from Gabagool here. Going to get a ton of damage, honestly. And one hit will do it. Oh, jumps. Aww. 
No punish! Senpai was looking for the standing oh, yes! punish. You could have gone for a jumping heavy or something at that point. Oh, no. Obstacle for a grab, not the back, back throw. To get the oh no! Swap. Gab looking for anything. DP misses! Oh my gosh. This is Chip. No skill gauge! That fast! Oh. Gabagol gets in with the EX Lariat! That skill gauge was just creeping up. Senpai was desperate to get that, that skill gauge just a little bit longer, but... That nerf, dude, they like, you felt it there at the end. That's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Dear Psy Games, like, <laughs> I just want to talk. Too many Senpai Spider getting the first hit. <laughs> Too many 2Bs killing the lower rank players, you know what I'm saying? That's, yep. The patch for the masses. 2U counter hitting that 2M. Not quite getting the EX Larry at that time. Senpai Spider staying a little farther away now. They're slowing down the pace. Waiting for Gabagol to option overextend. Gonna get a punish on it. Not too much damage, but gets you the knockback. Skybound art is now on the table for Gabagol. Was waiting for them to senpai to commit to a button. Speaking of, whoa! He's too good. <laughs> He's too good. <laughs> you just wait for a button press, bro. Then you throw it out. That's the classic Ladiva. Been doing it for four years. Unfortunately, the 5M will reach, and Senpai Spider will put himself on match point again. Senpai struggling to get that victory, but managed to find its mark. Gabagol starts off with a round start lariat, hoping for a little overzealous opening. Senpai ducks it, and no punish. Just keep into the zoning pattern. 5 MMH Doesn't build back much skill, but does get Gabagol away, and that's the important thing. Big combo. New combo, actually. Yeah. We're seeing a lot less rolls coming up from Gabagol and way more spot dodges instead. Okay, Brave counters to relieve some pressure. Seals the turn away. Looking for the next answer. Has 100 meter to play with. Oh, thought we saw a twitch oh, nice on dodge. the button, but unfortunately, Senpai didn't commit to anything. I'm just on the 2U, but no combo route that would actually get anything. Go Gage wasn't that low either. Dash of command grab for Gabagool. It starts. One, one more. Dodges. Oh, but just it's the, the default follow up. Anything can happen here. Dash up throw to end it. Anticlimactic it may be, but Senpai Spider will punch a ticket to top 24 with the 2B. Double grab. Hey, even with the nerfs, they still got the sauce. And we were all kind of expecting the Matera to come out in this specific matchup, but we're seeing why the 2B was also a force to be reckoned with. You can just see the struggle of Gabagool just trying to find an answer to close the distance. And anytime Gabagool finally did close it, that unique was coming out. Yeah, a lot of the for you, a lot of projectiles. Um, not so much like the the regular. Like we see a lot with two B, just like a the toss, the pod toss, the two two L, or um, or her various other special moves is kind of a means to like bait your response on defense. Senpai Spider just staying fully away from Gabagool the entire match. Hmm. But yeah, uh, fantastic set. Good stuff to send by Spider. Gonna move on into top 24 winner's side. But guys, before we move on to the next set, we're gonna take a quick little break. Don't go anywhere. We got some more Grand Blue action coming your way. Absolutely.
All right. Welcome back, everybody, to WASD Grand Blue Open number 16. My name is Ryer, joined by Austi's Microphone and Empiris Club. Uh, he'll be back shortly, but we do want to get some of this top 24 action on the road. All's good, though. Just a bit of a bit of a hiccup, I believe, with the cat. So uh, we will not me, by the way, is different cat. Uh, we will uh, we'll be getting on with our top 24 winner side. We're going to play all four of these. Each of these is a top eight qualifier. Um, we have Riazzo versus Destin. That's going to be the first one that comes up. We have Vermilion versus Deva. We saw Deva earlier. Threx versus Salt Prophet. Uh, we saw both of them on stream earlier. Pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And Have a Nice Day versus Senpai Spider. We saw Senpai. <laughs> I'm curious who Hava is going to be playing. Dude. Hava was my bet for somebody that would be on Bane, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I feel like Hava normally that. tries the new characters. Yeah, I can see but that. But he could also be on Siegfried after no nerfs. Could be on Sieg. Uh, historically has played uh, Beelzebub, right? Like in previous versions. Um, I do think 6XL was something keeping Beelzebub down a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. So with, with the changes to that, that might be something we see someone revisiting. But yeah, uh, Siegfried, I think, is a pretty good guess. And I think I did see them say Siegfried gang rise up in the chat. So yeah, uh, that that's was <laughs> another reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of a hint, right? <laughs> oh, man. But All we right. do have our gamers. It looks like it's going to be near versus... Oh. So Destin, another near gamer, sticking with near. Love to. I actually love to see it. You know, it's like it's almost like you know, put your money where your mouth is. I love this character, right? Gets nerfed. You still love this character, and pretty much everyone has. I mean, again, she's not bad, um, by any means. She's still quite strong, just not that. I saw top the memes. One. They dragged her down from S plus to S. <laughs> yeah, or what's the? There's, there was another game. Oh, it was the Luke. It's the Luke. The Luke from SF6 meme where it's like, ah, and they shake it on the tier list a little bit and then just drop it back in S tier. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> yeah. Oh my god, my abs. It hurts so much. Riazzo, we have seen play Anila in the past as well, I believe. Also known for yes. six, but wanted Anila to work. Pre patch and would always, you know, inevitably go to six. Oh my god. But now Anila has been buffed, so let's see how Anila goes here. Eight? Big. It, is the Ouch. main change all they gave her to basically like Yushi? Um, as far as I see, yes. Of course, 6XL six, six change does affect her as well. I think she had a couple other notes that I cannot remember off the top oh of my, my head. God. But I mean, this is just such a big, it's a full screen confirm for anything. Damn. Na, 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 na. Okay, so Riazzo yes. looking really strong on this Anila. This is almost like a, uh, a change in the power dynamic between the characters. Big hit from Destin yes. here though. Nier still does not lack the damage by any means. Oops. Oh, big counter hit with the U-spin. Tons of damage. Time to guess. Just going to Brave counter out. Eight. Oh, oh the cross-up over here. A classic. No cheap, cheap, cheap. Dude, Time to guess. Anila's just ability to lock you down full screen is crazy now. Yeah, if she has meter to spend, a little handshake. If she has meter to spend, she can kind of do it. That's punishable now. Oh. Unfortunate. Not quite used to that yet. Riazzo living on a prayer here. Gets the ultimate umbrella. Destin with no stocks, though. Yeah. Still gets... <coughs> excuse me. Still gets the 2L to take it down. Engage. I'm in Anila main, and she's just so fun. People get so trolled by the sheep, and her voice lines are so cute when she says, Mofa Mofa Ja! LOL, she's super random, but also smarter than she looks. Just like me, XD. As Riazzo gets the hit into the big <laughs> raging strike in the corner. He's dead. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Kills you faster than I can read a copy pasta. Gonna take that game. Lambs are for life, not for the knife. <laughs> Gonna take that. First game, looks like Destin taking a second. So, we are seeing it, I think, particularly from Nier, 
where 6XL is not the party starter that it used to be for her. And she doesn't have as many of them now, really relying on that, like, 2U and really relying on, like, some of these uh, death skills to get things going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Destin's already almost out of stocks, already down to five. And tries to get across through there, doesn't bite on Riazzo's side. Oh, big hit! Oh, that's massive. What a conversion. Yeah, super good conversion, even on the air hit. So this will drop a little sooner. Uh, Riazzo ready for it, though. Dropped a little sooner than you would expect because the air hit started it. Wee. Grab. Ultimate sheep, but mows right on through, does death. Death waits for no lamb. Dash in. Another one. But again, with the 6XL nerf, it's much harder to confirm off of that full screen, too. You have to run further than you did before. And Destin not able to make it across the screen there. Spot dodging, trying to look for something there. Probably for an ultimate spin. Oh, death is too far away now. 6 6 H. To you. Huge to you on. Uh... Yeah, it's the esports button. A A. Big plus. Oh, yeah, just to you into spot dodge to make it a little less minus. Ultimate dash from death there. Oh my goodness. Empty jump low does get blocked by Destin. Destin's still holding on pretty tight here. Five out pressure. Corner time. Oh yeah, get off me. Oh. Erm. That's a lot oh of damage. My oh my god. <laughs> Wait, okay. Doesn't have any more raging strikes. Do not get touched. Uh oh! Oh, super! Super! Just kill her. Kill her. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Scream at her. And it's been a minute since I've seen this uh, SSBA. Yeah, a lot of times we've been seeing Nier use her ultimate skill largely for that EX twirl. Or, sorry, excuse me, ultimate twirl. Um, and not really going into super confirms unless it's a, a wash of a round. Destin using that's a good effect there, though. And here's the classic. Mix up time. Ugh. Ooh. Oh my goodness, they both bonked down on her at the same time. That actually launched her and made it harder to make that confirm happen. So, unfortunate. Death actually not helping. Punish! Good one. I'm pretty sure it's minus six, though. So, not... Only two stocks left. Not a free Not punish. great for Destin. Okay, throw. Mix up time! Oh, mix, mix this. Into the mash! Yeah, just mash 5L. Okay. Destin running it back, perhaps getting... Riazzo not getting as many opportunities to throw, like, ultimate sheep and stuff. And I think that's working out for Destin. Destin also not doing, like, JU as much and as many, like, committal options. Mm -hmm. Really just waiting. Waiting a little too much here, though. Getting safe jumped in the corner. Mix up. Yeah, classic. Kill. There you go! Oh, nice mash. Treat that you just... said that was minus six? Yeah, minus six. Just like Grimnir's uh, jump scare. Uh, you can just 5L or Aging Strike punish it. Not sure if we have Destin listening in the chat or just realized it throughout the set. But yeah, 5L Raging Strike is pretty much the best punish you'll get on a lot of those situations. Oh, big hit. I want to give a quick shout out to Viram in the chat. Been looking at all the Percy tech. I played him in vanilla. And Viram kept, held it down throughout the entirety of uh, first patch of this game. Now eating super good. A big hit from Riazzo here. Going to take it to the corner. Mix up! Oh no, 2H on oh, that nice second jump attempt. Back at you. A. Ra. Nice. Side swap too. Oh, it's the raging Yeah, strike. a little bit of a delay been, uh, on good. that. Chance time. Oh my goodness, Smash is on the cross what happened there. Oh, you died. Oh my god. Super. Hey, you're, you're Giga dead. Yep. Buster Wolf. Buster Sheep, I guess. Buster Wolf in Sheep's clothing. And Riazza will take that 2-1 over Destin. Oos, oos, oos. Buster Wool? Wait, that's that's sick. <laughs> that's really good. Buster Wool? Buster Wool? So good. Yeah. Good stuff. I mean, Anila, we got two Anilas sitting here in top 24 winner side. Drex is also here. True. I, uh, I'm i not actually sure how that's going to go. Versus the Lewain. Yeah. 
it is hard to fight someone as strong as Lowain. So oh, we'll we also have two two Bs. Oh, four Bs. Vermillion. Four B squared. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right, Deva versus Vermillion. <laughs> Vermillion on the 2B as well. Yeah, so um, Siegfried, largely unchanged. We saw Deva playing Siegfried earlier. Two great effect. Vermillion on the 2B. I'm not familiar with the name, um, so I've not seen them play yet, but I do like seeing a 2B. Good to go. Send it off. This matchup, so I played some 2B pre-patch. Didn't love this matchup, but excuse me, it felt like I had some decent tools to deal with Sig. Mm -hmm. Sig cannot brainlessly throw a uh, wa wave fireball because you have grappling hook, which will go through that and take you over there in the right circumstance. Um, 2B also with pretty good normals. Got to watch out. I, I think I think 2B's crouching medium can interrupt the Rekka sequence. I'm pretty sure it reaches uh, high enough. Okay. Uh, most characters is can as long as they have the right like hitbox. Pretty sure two B is one of them. So we'll see. We'll see how Vermilion wants to approach this. I again think two B should stand back pretty far in most matchups, and Dave is not going to let that happen. Okay, five M getting the hits, and we're seeing a lot of that. So normally when you would see like five MMM, you would see some kind of skill extension from two Bs. Now she's just electing to go to the Ender. The, uh, just the, the H ender. Okay, full combo oh, here. Yeah. Oh no, Ooh. says, I've seen that before. Does Deva big mash on the five heavy. Really just outright damage. expecting. Just outright expecting that. Big damage, wave fireball. 2L mash though. Oh, the delay mash. Little, little OS into there. Death. Yeah, into death. This is the 2B BNB we saw earlier, where you just raging strike, raging chain three times in a row because you don't want to spend any skill gauge. Understandable. Oh, yeah, wow. It's... Okay, same start from Deva here. See if Vermillion's able to escape it. Walk backwards. Decides to just 236L. Really late Brave counter there. Probably didn't even oh. need it. All right, here we go. On the crouching confirm is going to take all of this. Yeah, just get... And again, it, it's, that's what it's looking like with 2B. What? That's what it's looking like with 2B is when you do the new version of the combo you just cut it like one rep shorter one special move extension shorter sense. and you preserve your skill gauge that's kind of what we're seeing from these 2b players yeah instead of doing a second rhino charge they're just ending it I, I think that works out fine her damage is going to suffer for it but none of her tools will change as a result like, yeah she'll still be playing the same matchup big plus frames wow went for the guard crush yeah Deva does not want any of that Ooh, who tries to roll through? Oh, you're dead. Yeah, you're super dead. Oh, oh no, drop! Stop. Do not do anything, Aaron. Lasers on the table. Oh, you died. Yeah, okay, I had to look at the health bars really quick to confirm, but yeah. Supers through. Basically, anything to be... Anything under half would have killed, I feel like. Anything to be does in a block string that isn't, like, that is going to leave a, a pretty reasonable gap that you can super uh, okay. I mean, you just got to be careful where she's positioning herself because like if she was going into 2-2-U or not 2-2-U, excuse me. She did go into 2-2-U. Two -two if she was going into 2-2-L two -two instead, that would whiff. Okay. All right, let's kill him with hammers. Hey, nice. not ready for it. Hello. That is still a, that little run mix nice up is there. always mashable, but you know, it's, it's tricky. Oh, you got to be fast. No, what an unfortunate drop. Yeah, unfortunate drop. You're gonna get the full extension here all the way to the corner. I like that route. I don't see that one a lot. Okay, guard cancel out. Waiting. Oh no, tried to press 5B, but was too slow. Oh no, and that... Oh, yep. Simple and clean. Vermillion taking game one. To be good? Question mark? A lot of people were I mean, dooming on. A lot of people were dooming on 2B, but uh, looking like she still has plenty of sauce. That's par for the course when uh, Ash notes come out. I feel like. Yeah, minor inconvenience. <laughs> okay, gonna take the Rhino charge. A a a full extension. A, oh my a. god! 
big Ver hit. The spacing from Vermillion is just immaculate. Like, we've seen so many just clean whiff punishes, even with, like, 2B's stubbier buttons. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, plus frames. Doesn't go into the Raging Strike there in the corner. Might have had an opportunity to kill. Double jump to dodge the anti-air. Hey. Yeah, get off me. We'll do it. D. One more game for Vermillion to get into top eight. Yeah, that's a big thing for the... Ooh, nice roll. Matchup, I feel like being able to double jump the projectile. Yeah, you. Can, but uh, once you do your second jump, you cannot even air block. So, like, Sigfree can chase you up with a jumping normal or even, like, use, like, a non-EXDP to anti-air it. Um, ah. Something we might see. But big hit here. Might even go into super, yo. With one diamond, you are any touch away from death here. 2M, the god. Oh, dodged! Wait, miracle time? This is one diamond left for Deva. You know what we haven't seen with all the two Bs in here? We haven't seen the self-destruct suit. Right? And I pray that we never will. My, uh, I'm in the minority. What oh, a god! He got mashed by the hell! <laughs> Vermillion timing two spot dodges there to dodge all those five L's, but not enough to stay away from the onslaught. A flurry of blows, as Adam Sessler would say. <laughs> Oos! Okay, guard cancel to keep the corner. No canceling that. Again, I think 2B can press crouching medium, even on a no cancel there, but I could be wrong. 2B's buttons are a little slower. Oh, oh. delays the anti-air, does get it on that jumping age. Massive. Oh, drops that route. Same route we've seen him go for a couple times now. Ooh, a little too oh, late. To anti -air. A little too late on the grappling hook, but still works out in Vermillion's favor. Has none skill bar. Oh my gosh, just tries to jump in again. No, f wait, you're dead. Easy peasy combo. Vermillion winning, moving into top eight winner side over Deva. One 2B has made it to top eight. We, based on how this bracket is laid out, we could have a 2B winner's final. I would True. be shocked. That would not have been on my bingo card. This, um, uh, when we see that next, the the last round rather, the, the range that that, um, guard crush came in from from vermilion was actually quite far away yeah like that actually like you, i feel like you're not expecting it from that range i'm i'm taking a look at losers and uh it's actually pretty wild let's see we got so, i see some matches we coach steve versus kiri in losers very strong match kiri taking it over um, goku to get there and no coach steve yeah, yeah, taking yeah, it over kiri yeah 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 Makona versus Lunar is also a pretty big one. Makona taking it over Gabagool. Very nice. Um, yeah. Vanitas is out. Gucci Blunt Rap is out. Is still in. Wii is out. Lunar's playing Makona. Yeah, There's uh, some pretty big matches down there. All of them trying to get into the loser side of top eight. Oh, to Noburia in the chat. Um, the match arena is only for payouts. Uh, join the Discord if you want to sign up for the tournaments. Yeah, we do it on Start GG, so you can sign up there. The that link will uh, well, not quite, but if you do Start GG slash Watch was the GBVSR, uh, it'll always be the current week's bracket. So like tomorrow, that'll update to. Um, uh -huh. Next week's ramble. I'll actually update it now since uh, we're in the middle and the other one is linked. Oh, there um, we go. Yeah. But yeah, definitely join the Discord and then check out that Star GG. We do run these every Wednesday. Um, oh, donation to the Match Arena. My my ears always Whoa, perk go. up when I see a donation to the Match Arena. Okay, and they went straight into. They're going right into it. Shout out to <laughs> eager players. Uh, so, Dr. Sauce, thank you for the 25 to the match arena. We appreciate you. Okay, so this is Threx versus Salt Prophet. We've seen both these folks play earlier tonight. Threx on the Anila, Salt Prophet on the Lawane. This could be, and I don't want to jinx anything, if Threx wins this and then Senpai wins his match, it could be Anila versus 2B, Anila versus 2B in our top eight winners' side. I don't so, know, man. It, you have top one. Yeah, you're fighting on against top right one now. right now, though. Yeah. Uh, top one, of course, chat, if you're not familiar, is Lewayne. 
best oh. character in the game, bar none. On cheese. Oh, cross up from Riazo. Soul Prophet looking really strong here. Buster Wool. Let's go. And then the bros, you must block this. Oh, okay, yeah. well, you can't block while you are attacking. Charges in with the corn. Makona, thank you for the raid for the party of four. Thank you for joining the tournament. I hope you had fun. Welcome, Raiders. Zero losing matchups. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This character is too good. Soul Prophet showing us exactly why. Applying this corner pressure. Two Threxes, Anila. Uh oh. Guards. Soul Prophet waiting. Sends in the bros. Oh, Sheep Trumps Robot, let's go. Yeah, sheep Beats Robot, everyone knows the rules of uh, Settlers of Catan. I don't know. <laughs> punish! <laughs> no, he wants to punish that! It's Yeah, that is the thing to learn against Anila now. She cannot let that rock, that is jab punishable. In pretty much every case. Oh no. Nice! Okay. Lock those. Okay! Okay! Oh, you oh, hate this. No. It's just... Oh, no. I, I hate I hate to say it, but, like, pretty much every... Gonna eat? Everyone just blocks no. high, then low, then high, then low. And every Luane, like, locks onto that and just does the same one twice in a row. Gotta look out for it. Salt Prophet taking a early W. Yeah. See? It's also really rough, too, right? Because you gotta stick to Luane because he'll just eat if you don't. Yeah. But if you stick too close... You're like in optimal range to get pyramided. Yeah, look, I'm just saying, if he eats, he has ultimate bros. Oh my god, bros. he ate in the combo? Part of his Oki was eat? Let's go. Ultimate bros incoming. Actually, Soul Prophet doesn't use that move too much. No. Which is uh, surprising because it's the best move in the game. Oh, plus frames. EX bros. It's invisible. It's invisible when you have the, the crystal. Or are they like just a flashbang that comes across the screen? <laughs> Dude, when I'm seeing it, like <laughs> if he calls them in the corner like that, I couldn't see that throw at all. Yeah, the Genjutsu technique following trail. Like I would I would understand it if the bros normally had like, I don't know, a stink trail or something that followed them. But they don't they normally have nothing. When you put this skin on, they have like a trail of rainbows following them. I don't get it. Make it make sense. That was a sick route from Threx. See what I'm saying though? It's like it's literally a wall. Okay, eat and pyramid time. Wow, that just went right through the sheep. Okay, block, block. Threx with the reactions. Threx is quite good at blocking these. Punish. Oh, misses the punish. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a tough one. Oh my, the dash dancing from Luane. Back and forth, back and forth. Blocks the sheep. Sheep again. Sheep again. Oh no. Minus goes for the ultimate parry. Oh. oh no, that making contact is gonna hurt a lot and can use maybe even one more raging strike here. Chance to eat, chance for bros, big mix up, good block from Threx. Oh, EX oh. parry, or ultimate parry, excuse me, is going to take it for Salt Prophet, punching a ticket to the top eight where he'll be playing against Vermil. Pretty good, pretty good. Salt Prophet looking strong on the Loane. Loane getting, I think, none changes for this patch. I don't think. I don't yeah. think so. I yeah. Think I, oh, I, I think he's one of the five L. I think he's one of the five L gamers. I think he got a five L buff. Um, let me see. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Uh, two Salt Prophet there. We got one more top twenty four winners match for you. It's gonna be have a nice day. Versus Senpai Spider. Oh, one of the classics. Yeah, we've seen this match quite a few times. Pretty up in the air. We might see like Siegfried 2B. I'm not sure exactly what we will see here. Yeah, I'm curious who they're going to play to be honest. Uh, going back to Loane, yeah, only got a far L buff like some of the other casts. So basically unchanged. Ah, okay, okay. It's me, Merp. Oh. I'm trying to squint. Is that Jita? Hmm? I can't see what character have us on. Is that Jita? It might be it is Jita. Jita. 2B Jita, yeah. Yeah, so Jita versus 2B. Senpai sticking with the 2B. 
I'm honestly at this point, I feel like we're seeing him on 2B more than we're seeing him on Matera. Yeah, he might have uh, swapped. It's one of those classic situations that happens in a lot of uh, a lot of like Street Fighters and stuff, where you know a new version of the game will come out, and the character's like legacy character won't be in the game anymore, and they switch to a new character, oh, but yeah. they're always known as like, oh, you were a Bison player, right? Like, but you know, Bison's not in the game anymore yeah. or whatever. It's that, that's kind of what ends up happening, but. Um, it is going to be Jita versus 2B lore matchup. EX Fireball getting started for Hava. Nice. Jita also basically unchanged with the patch. I think just 6XL change. 6XL change and 5L change. So she got the universal changes. Her 5L is better reaching, so 2L, 2L, 5L works now. 6XL got its range de uh, debuff. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, Jita never ne never had a lack for damage. 99 meter 10 that off, though. Senpai looking for help. Help in the corner. 5M's out. Nope, no help to be found. Has 100 meter here. Can do almost anything. DP? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Pretty much nothing to lose there from Hava. Even if that DP got dodged, like blocked, uh, Senpai would die dodged you're taking maybe like 30 40 percent because the skill gauge was not that high pretty favorable situation for uh have okay footsies both players trying to keep a good range from each other Ooh, that 236l whiffing was really scary 2m Dodge. Wow, that was a really sick uh, yeah. 6U. Gun. I mean, yeah. Senpai's reactions, like, as we already know from all that time on the Matera and the Onre, like, are just already cracked. Yes. And so it's very interesting seeing him navigate kind of, like, neutral with uh, 2B's tools. Because plays her in a way that, like you were saying, plays her more like a zoner than most of the people we've seen come on with 2B. For sure. And, and when I see like Japan play 2B a lot, I see a long range patient 2B from them most of the time. Nice 2H from Hava. Should be enough Thank here. Sure. Yeah, pretty much. Another one. Good. Easy peasy confirm. Have a nice day taking the first game pretty quickly. Will we see a character select? Definitely taking a second at the very least. Yeah, thinking about it, because I mean, that was pretty convincing for Hava. Yeah. Senpai not really getting a chance to get started. Any hit that Senpai got was like just a quick knockdown off of like the Blade Flurry, where Hava's getting like full, full confirms with all the EX skills and everything. Um. I, I like I like Senpai like running in and breaking, like waiting, trying to see if mm -hmm. if he can whiff punish these six six L's. Not quite getting it yet, but I think is gonna get close. Hava also not as well. Yeah, see looking for it right there. Hava not really biting either until until he's in range. Um, okay. Nice. A break conversion, max range. Big confirm. Another big confirm the here. Six L wall maybe spends. No, I don't think so. It just takes the... Maybe. Hello? No, it does. Yeah, okay. It does spend. That combo went off forever. I guess you're getting rid of the BP. Yeah, getting rid of the... Oh my and then god, you get... that scaled way better than I thought it would. You get yours back, too. If you're going into super, there's almost no reason not to do a Raging Strike confirm in there. Yeah. Absolutely. Oops. Oh, tries to get the 2-2-U. Two -two not quite fast enough. What?! <laughs> The baseball, like, actual, like, wind-up dodged <laughs> the attack there. Uh, unfortunately, haven't recovered in time. But that was, like, that was, like, the most footsies thing you can ever, you could ever conceive. It's an anky new footsie. <laughs> oh, wow. The preemptive anti -air. That was mad early. She was so close to the ground. Yeah, 2H not getting anything off of it either. Getting a nice combo here, though, into a uh, dash up 5L. Dash L from Hava. Hit something on wake up, getting counter hit with the 6XL. Wow! Oh! SBA through the grappling hook. 
Hey, big. That's Hava taking it. As long yeah, as there's no drop skis. Another raging. Yeah. 2 0. Oh, have a nice day. Yeah, just a little slow on the 2 2 U there in the previous round. And yeah, the, the the guard cancel got dodged by that baseball windup, but it just it wasn't fast enough. Boom. Boom. That was you see the damage that did from half his combo was massive. Have a looking in a prime position to take this. Yeah. Very of these top twenty four matches, I, I think they won the most confidently. Hey, Austin's back. Yo, what's good? I didn't want to interrupt you guys while you're in the middle of that set. I, I was kind of vibing. I was kind of listening. You feel me? <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, had a slight emergency, but everything's all good now. And we're back with some more Gramble action. What did I miss? Uh, so you missed our top 24 winner side. So our top eight winners is settled. It's going to be Have a Nice Day versus Riazzo and Vermilion versus Salt Prophet. So that's going to be Jita. Hava was playing Jita. Riazzo on the Anila. Vermilion on the 2B. And Soul Prophet on the Lewane. No vein, huh? No, no vein. vein. Uh, losers still coming along. Destin did Nier. make it through. Top 24 losers. Uh, that's going to be Nier. And then we got Senpai playing Justin. Threx playing Coach Steve. Coach Steve might be on vein. Um, yeah. You can see that. Steve on the vein going we from one dragon to the next. Yeah, we haven't seen Steve on stream yet, so no confirmation there. But vein is, uh, I saw chat talking about Steve's vein. And then Deva versus Lunar, that's Siegfried and Kag almost certainly. So while those finish up, we do have our top eight winners to get started. Ooh, and before the lap, maybe we could talk a little bit about that Matcherino. You know what yes. I'm saying? You guys can head on over to that Matcherino by typing exclamation point Matcherino. Pops up the link. You guys can claim some codes. You can do some quests if you feel a little bit more generous than that. You can even donate some money towards the pot. Anything and everything is welcome. But at the end of the day, guys, we're just glad you're here and joining in with some good old fashioned Grand Blue. It's, uh, it's been a good one so far. I think we've gotten to see a lot of kind of what this new patch has to offer. I mean, just just this top eight winner side spread is very different than not only what we expected, but like character wise, not quite what we've seen in a while. So I think that's a really good sign. And uh, yeah, lose, as loser shapes out, that continues to be true. Yeah, it looks like we're going to jump into our next set coming up here. Like you said, we got Salt Profit. Facing off against Vermilion and winner's side of thing. Uh, players, I don't think we're even seated to be in the top eight. Now both on winner's side, guaranteeing themselves top five. Yeah, very much so. And this matchup, I, I play, I've i played this a little bit as 2B pre-patch. And 2B definitely has a lot of tools to make it annoying for Luane to, in particular, eat and call things like the cat missiles. Um, but those are all very skill intensive things. They cost like that is actually the exact thing I was referring to, but it does cost three to four skill gauges to do that. So we'll see how that affects post patch to be. I was gonna say that now that's a precious commodity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's you got to make sure it's worth it because Salt Prophet right back in it just gets his cooldown back and is able to go after it again. Vermilion still recovering the skill gauge. I like that sometimes Salt Prophet likes to go for that route that gives him back a little bit of health or meter, depending on which food item he gets. You know, it's just a, it's a really good buff to go for, especially if you're like <gasps> that, that close to getting that one hundo. That spacing was immaculate from Vermilion going for that uh, crouching medium specifically to bait the ultimate counter. Does get a punish after it too. Okay, what are your reactions? Are you nice with it? Oh, we almost had it. We had the double block into the spot dodge on the third on the, the knee swing, but just wasn't enough. You know, that's the closest we've seen. He freaking died for it. His life's not fair. <laughs> I, I'm number one Loane hater. Like, I don't like this character. <laughs> God, I'll, I will never forget month one of Vanilla with Loane's just winning turn, not winning tournaments, but getting into top eights because they, they do the Mario Party minigame. And people just didn't know how to fight it yet. Yep. And uh, this is looking good for Vermilion, though. Again, used the grappling hook to... Oh, that was so nice! 
baiting oh, the EX counter. Easy peasy confirm here into super. Use the EA, uh, the grappling hook, excuse me. Use the grappling hook to go through the Catalina missile uh, bot's missiles. So for those of you not familiar, if that grappling hook makes contact, 2B is just going to cross the screen and get to her opponent through hell or high water. Any projectile, anything, she will dash forward. Yeah, even with like a jump like that, that jump is practically a jump scare sometimes just because of the, the slew of options that 2B has in her arsenal to mix you up. Speaking of getting mixed up, we're going to be able to finally get out of that mix, going for some normals, put you out of the corner, waits for the parry. Nothing to come from it, though. Nice patience. Air to air. Not going to get a huge combo here. Actually, even ending it earlier than, than most. All right, it's time. Oh, we oh, just stalled out? I love that. Though. Grabbing that way up above even where the, the poppers can, can open her up. That That's actually really sick. Like, I'm just going to escape this option altogether. And no, uh, you can't stay up there forever. She can't float on the, the pod for that long. But that's okay. We're coming back in. Oh, no, trying to jump over Loane's nonsense. Oh no, that was all the skill gauge. One chance here for uh, Vermilion. Not going to even get it. The slide into the EX Awesome Sauce. We'll take game one for Salt Profit. Salt Profit on the verge of getting into winner's finals using Loane. And like, there were a lot of characters we were expecting in winner's finals with like the patch shakeup, you know, with like some balances here and there. Loane was like on no one's radar. Yeah, I mean, he's, I always call him really, really strong. Uh, top one jokingly, but like legit, I think he's really, really strong. And so I'll probably showing us why here. Back throw into the corner is going to give Vermillion a chance here though. And yeah, no Luane is ever scared to parry. Good answer. Especially with like 6 xls One thing we've not seen any 2B in this bracket go for yet is the gravity Oki situations. And I think now we've just reached a point where it is too costly on the skill gauge. Hyper Pyramid gonna come out. Instant overhead, making contact. It's a big knowledge check with this, right? I feel like Salt Prophet's going for the Human Pyramid the second he gets 100 meter, if it's gonna kill, because he's recognizing that he's hit Vermillion every single time with it. Yeah, I think knowledge check is a word you use for, but I almost call it a reaction check. It's more like WarioWare than Mario Party. You just gotta make sure mm. that you're looking out for the right thing. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Jason DS64 for the $15 to the match arena. We appreciate Yo. you. Thank you so much. You rule, dude. Thank you. Oh my god, okay. this combos are climbing again. Vermilion cannot let Salt Prophet breathe here for a second. Oh, that was a sick mix up. We just do the side swap. I was going to say, do not parry that. There is no way 2B will be in your face <laughs> when that thing makes contact. But Salt Prophet went for it, anyways. One round apiece in game two. Vermilion with the first hit. Plus. Yeah, going for the uh, the normal combos here into the tether to bring you right towards him. But this is where Loane likes to shine. Saw Prophet going with the Catalina Bob. Puts you right back in with some pressure here from the opponents. We're just going to reverse a lot of that situation. Good delay on the DP from Vermilion. DP right back, though, from Saw Prophet. And all the way to the corner, you're back in the corner again. Yep, oh, this, this cheap. Is the name of this matchup, I guess. And uh oh, here we go. Fifth time's the charm. Oh my god, so Ooh. scary. Dodging, dodging. Oh, living. Okay, Vermillion got I mean, away with that. I mean, as if you, you survived it, congrats. You probably still can't punish me. Salt Prophet takes it with the 6XM. Hey, we take the small victories out here. We were able to survive through the human pyramid this time around, even though with a little bit of health wasn't enough to play with afterwards. And here's a different matchup that I didn't witness. Oh yeah, this is the old replay. Yeah, that was that was a good matchup. I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the in space. Hey. <laughs> yeah, good stuff to Salt Profit. Winners finals. Guaranteed top three to play the winner of our next match. Uh, I'm kind of excited for this one. Have a nice day versus Riazzo. Riazzo has been on the Anila for quite a long time mm. as a side character to six. And now looking like uh they've gone with Anila through the whole bracket. And it's going to be up against Hava's. We've only seen him on Jita, but I, I know there's a lot of characters in that tank. Yeah. Have a nice day. Mostly known for the Beazelbub in 6, but has played a multitude of characters. Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly going with the Jita this time around, finding some success. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Jita's really, really good, right? Uh, definitely a solid character. Definitely nothing like, you know, like, oh, crap, that's super powerful. Like, she does a lot of damage, and she's very solid. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say anything above and beyond what 
rest of the cast has. Avid just that type of player who can leverage that to huge effect. Yeah, and it is definitely making some waves out here in winner's side of things. Meanwhile, Riazzo, uh, like you said, Anila getting a lot of work out of that character it was just just needed that little extra oomph from the patch and is now finding himself in a really good spot. Speaking of the top eight bracket, let's take a little peek at this one right now. We already got one of our uh, four players from the lower th side of things, Destin, way down there in the first round. We're still waiting on a couple of uh, top 24 qualifiers and loser side to figure out who the rest of our top eight's going to be. But this bracket's already looking pretty strong on the winner side of things. It looks like Coach Steve did make it over Threx. Um, yep, Ooh. actually just populated there. Um, so, yeah, we may see the vein. We may see, Fingers crossed. And then Dave and Nooner. Dave and Lunar have to play, and Senpai Spider and Justin have to play. Absolutely, man. I mean, Steve obviously been wrecking the, representing the Siegfried since the pretty much the beginning of Rising, and uh, now that Vane's coming, I was going for one Dragonite. The next, we'll see if this is more of a permanent decision for Coach Steve, or if this is just kind of like a trial tournament for him to see, like, mm -hmm. hey, how can how good is Vane? Do I have to work that much harder, or can I still just do stuff with Siegfried? Because at this point in time, there's really no reason to drop Siegfried like cold turkey because he's still in a really really so good strong. spot yeah not for sure um bit of a change on the uh two and four u which was something steve liked to do a lot i think among most siegfrieds <laughs> i saw coach steve go for that a lot mm -hmm. um but i don't think that would be enough to sway someone like him off the character could you imagine like he's just like what i can't do my <laughs> infinite i can't do my unblockable reset i'm done in the trash like <laughs> Yes. I I mean I've seen other players do more for less, you know. It's, mm. But um yeah, we'll, we're waiting for these players to come up here. I do see the Jita on Hava again, so it does look like that will be what he goes with. Sick. Love to see a uh, good Jita. Jita like you said, just one of those characters, obviously a Shoto, but it's just really fun to just watch play cuz most of the time, you know, they're just playing like how what do you say? Honest footsies. Is that is that sure. what you would call it? Is that is that I, I yeah, I've called it that in the past. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how scathing my voice was, but no, all jokes aside, like <laughs> she I don't think she has any like massive like gamer buttons or anything like that. She's she's you know, just a solid She plays Grand Blue, you know, she plays Grand Blue the way that most of the characters do. She plays the game very well. Just Having access to a Rekka on top of that, being able to do what she wants, like whenever they're like in the middle of a block stream, whether you want to let it rip early or late and try to call out a frame trap. But Riazzo over here with the Anila getting a lot of buffs for trouble. Baits out a grab with the back step and is going to make that damage climb even further. This has only been two hits so far. And uh, have a going to turn it around. Going to get Riazzo into this corner. Also, big shout outs to Diaphone for the raid. Thank you, Diaphone, for raiding in. Welcome, Raiders. Hope you're having a great day. We are in our winner's semifinals, winner's top eight of this bracket. Have a nice day on the Jita, getting massive damage on Riazzo with those zero BP left. Yeah, there's something that Jita could do is that she could dish out damage. And have a nice day. Just going to take that away from Riazzo, going from one throw bait to the next. All right. Uh... 6XL, Hava using it still pretty frequently. Jita's is still quite good. Did get a bit of a range nerf, but she has plenty of buttons that she can follow it up with to stay threatening. Yep. One of those buttons being uh, Far Light. Now that it's actually fixed for Jita, sometimes she can get... She, uh, there were uh, special cases in the past where she wouldn't be able to get a follow-up off of Far Light if they were like crouching, but now she's able to do it. Okay. Rekka just to get a mid-screen knockdown here. Oh, big ultimate sheep combo. That's one of the most destructive things in this matchup. Letting Anila get that meter is going to be super tough. So I think Have a Nice Day is probably going to play a little bit more aggressive against the likes of Riazzo. Oh my oh. gosh, that counter hit 5H. This is a ton of damage and an SSBA on top of this probably. I, I mean, think some conditioning going on here. You saw there are a lot of times Have a Nice Day was going for grabs in the beginning of the game, uh, beginning of the set rather, and now it's just like all falling apart out of resources out of bp still has some meter to try to get out but gets called out by a 6-6 l have a nice day having a good one here with game one yeah, very much and uh one game away from making it into winners finals riazzo not getting a chance to set up i i think we saw zero ultimate like ultimate sheep charges the one where the three sheep come out in that in that match 
So not even getting a chance to set up Hava staying very aggressive as uh, as he's known to do. Looks like we're going back into the lobby. Maybe wasn't able to hit rematch. That does happen sometimes. Could be a rematch. Could be a potential. Oh, could be a Riazzo to six, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, no. Just going to stick with Anila. Just wanted to take a quick breather before jumping right back into the set. But uh, the thing that Have Nice Day has been doing really good in this set is playing a super aggressive and being in Riazzo's face. Because that's what you have to do as you. Gina has the ability to play defensive or aggressive, depending on what she wants oh. to do. And now he has activated hyper mode and yeah. is <laughs> going crazy. Cast haste and gets right to it. Ultimate uh, Rekka going to get to the corner there. Looking very convinced. Wow, she went for it again. Bro, this is a, a uh, good first round from Have yeah. a Nice Day. That's, a, that's a gold split. That's a gold <laughs> split on first round. That, that was super fast. Holy moly. Well, on, on, the, on the way to a PB. Yeah. We'll see. Going to get the neutral jump off of the sheep charge. That was actually super nice. And then Grand Blue Zone into 6-6-L. Big combo. Spends one. Yep. Super. All, all of that was off of a 6-6-L. Be giving the longest cutscene in the galaxy, even even in times two <laughs> speed, it still takes forever for it to go off. All right, and we're back. Oh. Okay, we're stuck in the present now. Yeah. Okay, two ultimate sheeps into the. This is so much spend. It's like a Charlotta ultimate skill combo. There's so much yeah. damage there. That was a ton of damage, but now Riazza once again finding himself without BP. Does have meter if they want to play it. Yep, here we go. We're playing the long range game. Have Nice oh. Day playing very passive because he does have three BP to play with. Really scary whiff throw after that cheap charge from Riazzo. Not going to die for it, but only has really one chance here. No oh, way. You're too, you're too sick. sick. <laughs> you're too the sick. Second time. That's the second time we've seen this animation in this round. Oh my god. Yeah, achievement unlocked two supers in one round. <laughs> yeah. Landing both of them and taking away the set 2-0 and a handshake. Have a nice day going into winners of finals to uh, face off against the likes of Salt Prophet. Salt Prophet, that'll be a good one. See how Hava takes it to this Lewain that has been tearing up the bracket. Very excited to see a set like that. But Riazzo has been doing a really good showing so far today. And they're still in the bracket. Guaranteed at least top five going all Anila. So we'll see what he's got, got cooking later on in the loser side of things. Oh, for sure. And we do have the rest of our loser side mapped out. It's going to be Senpai Spider versus Destin and Lunar versus Coach Steve. A bunch of names we're quite familiar with in these WASD brackets. So um, should be some good ones down there. Yep. Oh, and for uh, the Raiders who just came in, we do have a match Reno for this event. Uh, if you're oh, still perfect. with us, one code left you can be that one person who claims that code you can do it live on the air if you click it right now we'll even show um, you that it will donate 25 free cents to the pot if you want to donate any more to the pot we have hit our 50 dollar goal which we love to see but we can always do better we have a stretch goal of 150 dollars, which will give us a top four payout tonight two of whom you know will already be have a nice day in salt profit there's that last code claim love hey, to see it who claimed it who got that last yeah, code can we scroll down Operator, can we can we scroll down and see who claimed that? <laughs> Operator, uh, <laughs> you, uh, send me more. <laughs> can, you, can you please scroll down? <laughs> Azando Crescendo, perhaps Crescendo Crescendo. Ooh, that's a, that's a sick name. If that is the name. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, also to everybody who contributed and claimed codes, we do appreciate y'all. Direct contributions are still open, or if you go down to the bottom there, there's some merch. There's also merch at Impurist Club or Impurist dot club, excuse me, Purist dot club. If you want to buy some merchandise, we have our regular Masher T. Uh, we have our MWA hoodie or Honest Mids hoodie, I believe, is what it is right now. And then the crossover arc merchandise, which features Siegfried, Anila from Grand Blue, and Kaguya and Kwon from Undernight. Bro, when I was uh, at Crossover, I really wanted that Masher shirt, but it wasn't there. It wasn't there. I wanted it so bad. So now I'm going to have to purchase it online instead. Can you believe this? They got you for the shipping. They got me with the shipping. Can't believe yeah. it. But it's a really good shirt. I got to get the crew neck version. I have the t-shirt, but I got to get the crew neck. Oh, you got the crew necks? No, no, no. They still have them. I said I, I want to buy one of the oh. crew necks. Wait, you're buying, the you're buying from Wait. yourself? 
Well, like I, I gotta, I gotta get one for myself. I gotta. <laughs> that, that. You're telling me myself. you don't. I've make... already paid for them all. I was under the impression that you make these shirts yourself. You, <laughs> you work night and day to knit these beautiful <laughs> shirts for the community. I would, I, I feel like I've been lied to. Imperius Club grinds so hard. He's like, I gotta buy a shirt from myself. <laughs> 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 All right, we got our next set coming up here. Losers round one of top eight. Senpai Spider facing off against Destin. You know, this there was a world Destin where this could have been a Matera mirror. Destin on the CAG here, not the near whom we saw them play earlier in the bracket. So going with the CAG, prob maybe for the 2B matchup. Yeah, I mean, Senpai's been on the 2B pretty much all day today. Meanwhile, Destin playing with the Kaiga the Astro also has a near, like you said, and an Andre Uno if they so choose to throw out, but it looks like they're rocking with the CAG this time. Wow, uh, Senpai Spider using a lot of rolls to get around these CAG traps. We might actually see a long match here. Both these characters content to kind of sit full screen and set up. Yeah, uh, CAG is one of the characters that whenever they're full screen, they have access to a lot of tools to play that long range game. One of them being that spear, right? Calculated, it's a semi-instant poke from nearly full screen. You just kind of have to hold that when it's coming towards you. Big, a big opening there off of the trap set above Senpai Spider's head. Mashing 5L though, deciding not to extend. That's, I was talking about it, I think this was while you were uh, AFK. Pretty much what we've been seeing uh, 2B post patch, the difference maker, is she just cuts her combos about one string shorter, about one special move into string shorter. And mm. that was Senpai Spider there not going for the like 2M into another charge. Destin taking round one though on the back of 6XL. Yep, charged Ooh, up a little here. bit of a rock here for him to use within the future. Rock is really good because it is able to stack with other sorts of abilities, such as the spear. If there's a projectile coming your way, you can just use the rock to block it when the spear comes out. Okay. Minus, but safe. Trying to keep this range. Trying to get Destin to do anything to get out of this corner. Oh no, no punish. Total whiff on the uh, Golden Throne, but no punish. Senpai felt a little bit afraid. It was a, I think that was, was that the jumping golden throne? Yeah, because yeah. when, you when you go for the jumping golden throne, you can act right out of it. So maybe Senpai thought that's what it was, so didn't want to mess with it. Okay, jumping H, gets guard canceled out. Destin doesn't want to deal with that. It's the hit too. Auto combo into a raging strike, raging chain. Teleport to stay in the corner, guess. Like oh that. yeah. I like I like that route to get the trap on the ground immediately to help you with the Oki. Very smart stuff coming out from Dustin. Five H. Oh goodness. Dash up to L. L L L Super is an easy kill here for Senpai Spider. Yep. Good mix up by the way. Uh Senpai ending her uh usually going for like the four swings, right, from the normals. And it only only ended up going with two. Saw and just ended it prematurely, ran up there and got a crouching like calling out Dustin's aggressive options. Taking uh taking full screen a uh, chain for plus frames. Most people expecting it at this point though, so not really biting is Destin. Mm. So that That's is so that. minus on with. That's so you'll notice that Destin's only charging rock up to level one. Just having level one is such a boon because of like what Destin just did. And being able to throw it right out of teleport is such a good option on top of being able to block some of these projectiles, which 2B has a plenty of. I think jumping. Grabs the the attempt at the brave counter. I just don't even want to mess with it. Done. Gets the lockdown. Oh, and Aaron dodge. Maybe expecting ultimate laser, but without any skill gauge, not going to get a full extension on that. Yeah, definitely just saw like a blue light and just went panic dodge. Yeah, we'll beat most of the options there. Okay, jumping up for the teleport, trying to bait out some sort of aggressive option from Senpai. Destin's out of resources in the BP department, so we're gonna be able to take 50% more damage, and we're not gonna oh. be able to use Brave. Oh my God, that rock actually Brave. saving the day there for a second. Trying to call out with the ultimate spears. We're basing back and forth, putting up the laser on top of these players. Eventually we'll come back down to try to shock them. Going for some gimmicky oh. stuff. Oh no, another one. I think Senpai Spider has locked into a weakness of Destin's reactions. Destin's reaction is actually working against him. It's as soon as that blue light flashes, like you said, the dodge comes and 2-2-U is right on time for a punish there. 
I mean, I get it. I would do the same thing. You see blue flashing light in this game, you instantly go into like fight or flight mode. Yeah, he's <laughs> adrenaline pumping. Yeah. Very much the case. 5M to get out of the corner. Sent by Spider taking the gun extension. Ooh, nice poke with the uh, with Pierce. Way to save again. Throwing out, throwing out some more calculations. Has a rock built up at level one, ready to rock. In case we want to go for it. Nice jump right above. Just goes for the crouching light right afterwards to increase that damage. Just gonna get a cross up here to set up the trap. Follow mix up some play spiders defense. No yeah. slouch though. Yeah, you're gonna force you to hold that block a little bit longer because that seal on the ground. We got a wall bounce that's probably gonna be death. We even have raging strike, but we're not even gonna need. We don't even need to use it. Good round for Destin there. Finally taking one out of Senpai Spider's hands pretty convincingly, not having to really scrap for it. Yeah, Keeping I remember uh, loser of this going down to the seventh place finish, so this is only a race to two. Only for, if uh, Destin loses this game, they're out. Yeah, pretty high stakes at this point in the tournament. And a lot of this, like, postulating back and forth, just walking back and forth from both players, not wanting to commit to anything, that is going to heavily favor Senpai Spider, who is just going to be able to build back skill gauge while that's yeah. happening. And speaking of that thing is full. Yeah. Gonna use the DP, get some pressure. Wow, ran all the way in with that dash L. Not punished by Senpai Spider. Plus frames. Mixing up his offense. Big hit here. Yeah, calling out Destin's toes to be able to get some more damage. Bullets, is, that bullet from the pot is actually really good because not only is it a pretty good reset or just like a block string ender, it also doesn't cost any skill gauge whatsoever. It's one of the very few skills that, uh, it's the only skill that doesn't cost any skill yeah, gauge. Yeah, that's her only special move that doesn't cost skill gauge. Even at that point, the block string using 5U would cost uh, skill gauge. Okay, we've seen this before. Oh, Destin jumping up, awesome. gets the grab. Big combo damage off of the grab because of that seal. That was a good mix-up coming out from Destin because the last time we saw that pressure coming in, Destin opted to go for block strings. This time, it was the immediate grab. Whoa, right back to the room with Senpai Spider says, I don't like this matchup anymore. Perhaps a character swap. Matera. Yeah, right, right to Matera. El Clasico. It's, yeah, like, I'm, is... it's like I'm back. <laughs> Matera versus Kag. It's like I'm back in the old days. Yeah, before rising. Back when yeah. we were lowering, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, let's see how this is the first time we're seeing on stream senpai bust out the matera one of the masters of this character 2500 mastery points to boot yeah, definitely been grinding this character so this matchup is very similar to the last one right we're gonna see a lot of long range battling but even more so because matera doesn't really have that uh, approach pressure that tubi has she does have wow. some options to be able to do, like command jump, but like a lot of this is going to be a lot of these arrows. This is like the prime spacing for Senpai. Yeah, and not even let, like Destin can't even get a rock charge, like what's happening a lot in the last match. Can't get a trap set up. Has to try to roll out for his life. And Senpai, we know will lame it out. Will just wait this 15 to some seconds. Doesn't need to commit to anything. Oh, the cutscene saving Destin's life there. Coming back in, running very low on health. At this point, Simpai could go for a chip kill. Hey, hard, hard knock down off of that. Gonna allow Destin to close some distance, but not get anything started. I think one more, one more arrow. Oh, this is getting super close. Destin trying to just like hang in there, move up slowly, bit by bit, until eventually gets called out by yet another arrow. In this matchup specifically, Kag has to be the aggressor. Yeah, the, there's that concept of like who's the beatdown uh, that, that comes up a lot in card games, and that is absolutely true in fighting games too. Kag is the one who has to turn it on Matera because Matera wins this game, this long range, like three three quarter screen, full screen game. Yeah, uh, the only thing that uh, Destin can do from the long range is try to build up a rock to be able to help with blocking of the projectiles, try to catch them out with a spear or go for a very risky teleport. So it's up to her to get back in there. That's exactly what Destin's doing. We have Senpai in the corner. This is where Mikaela does not like being, and we get the wall bounce. And this is the payoff for getting in, though. One more good hit from Destin will get Senpai to 0 HP. Destin do doesn't it. even care that Brave countered in and hit. It was just enough to just steal back the turn while the seal was up on the ground and allowed them to even up the game. We got final round here in game three. Game three winner goes on to fight for million loser goes home in seventh.
Loser is at home, uh, maybe. And so they might not have to go far, but they are going to be out of the tournament. Ooh. Hey, it's a long walk to that bed afterwards, you know? Yeah. Oh, no! Calls out the super jump with a crouching heavy. Takes up some damage, creates a lot of space, and now we're stuck here. We saw we called them out, mashing some bow in there. Just trying to go for the spear, but the maximum range while those butterflies come towards you. That's exactly what Senpai is looking for. The slowdown was just not enough to get that ultimate spear there. And that was what Destin needed to really get started here. Having spent 50 on basically nothing there now. Leader coming back, though. Has one more chance probably with one ultimate skill, one ultimate spear. Maybe a jump, a throne. Oh no, it's not gonna happen. The, the uh, simple command jump. Yeah, the five U into the JH is going to take it for Senpai Spider on the Matera. Clean zoning pattern. I mean, I always laud uh, Senpai Spider's zoning patterns, and he always has it clean. And it's yep. just gonna use that to move forward. Fight for million could be a two B mirror. <laughs> It could be, but yeah, Senpai putting on a, dis a really good display of switching between defensive and aggressive right at the end when we see that opportunity. And you're going to cash in that ticket over to losers cores of things, but shout outs to Destin getting a seventh place finish here at WASD Open 16, which is with this stack bracket, nothing to sneeze at. Oh, absolutely not. And yeah, it's going to be all killers all the time from here. And we saw some of the folks who didn't uh, make this top eight. So yeah, shout outs to Destin. Thank you for entering. Hope you had fun in the bracket tonight. Next one's going to be another classic, especially for these brackets. Coach Steve versus Lunar. Ah, uh, yes. Another Cagliostro coming up to bat here with the side of Lunar. No stranger to being to WASD online. Consistently getting second place finishes either at WASD or TNS. Still looking out for that first place finish, though. Yeah, and always sticking with the CAG. Definitely the character mm -hmm. he's played from day one and and will continue to. I mean, again, looking at patch notes, there's no real reason to switch off of this character uh, from where I'm looking. And then Steve, historically played Siegfried, has jumped around to a few different characters, though, in kind of more casual settings. And I always say, like, a new patch is a great time to try something new. So we'll oh, see yeah. what he brings to this. Vayne, Vayne has been... Vayne has been buzzing around. Uh, I've seen him play even like Lucilius and stuff and like casuals, so I'm not sure where he'll go. Yep, it could be a, a, a Vayne play just because that's uh, the murmurings have been that he's been playing a lot of Vayne today in this bracket. But I guess we're going to find out. Big Sword Man oh, or Big suspense. Health, and we'll have to wait and see what it's going to be. The suspense is killing me before he sits down going to character select. So that, that tells me this might. My soul read now, based on how long this is taking, is that it's Siegfried. Yeah, it's probably going to be Siegfried. Yep, yeah. you're right. Doesn't want to do... I mean, I, I get it. Vayne... Uh, actually, I feel like Vayne versus Kag wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I guess Spear kind of ignores the shield. This is some Fire Emblem weapon triangle stuff that I fully do not understand. <laughs> so I'm not sure if Sword or Spear is better against Book. Yeah, I, I just go for the crit unit. <laughs> uh, so see how he started. These two have also played each other quite a bit. Uh, so then we might see some layers, uh, as, as is usual for situations like this. Nice 2M, that button's so good. Yep, so uh, Siegfried from the patch notes kind of uh, got away with just like a, a little boo-boo that was really small. His uh, no longer is unblockable, it's a little bit easier to punish afterwards, and that's about it. Yeah, I think Keg. Does Keg even have a note? Maybe 6-6-0? He's scrolling I, right now. I'm, yeah, I'm literally looking it up. I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't think she was on there, so keeping her basically the same. So this is going to be very similar to how it was pre-patch. Uh, I will say Siegfried definitely uses 6XL more than Gag, I think. Uh, so that might, the universal change might affect him a little bit more. Nice dodge by Lunar. Lunar is so good at using air teleport and similar type moves, like the air ultimate trap. Anything that changes air momentum, he's so good at using those to bait out options from the opponent. And uh, speaking of uh, using some very popular moves, uh, Steve loves 6-6-M. Loves yes. poke those toes. Nice combo from Lunar here. Going to reset. That's when we saw um, Destin go to as well. The air to air into the trap side. This is death. Good. Nice. Getting that wall bounce. Throws you right into the grinder. And that's going to be an easy game one for Lunar. Lunar, 
Uh, also, just always a very heavy momentum-based player. If you let him get an inch, he will take the whole round. And we're seeing that happen here in Steve's case. Not really getting a chance to get started at all in game one. Okay, so she's finally gonna let that reversal rip a quick get off me move, but still isn't enough to relieve all of this daunting pressure from Lunar. Building up a rock as a reversal. And one thing that we're noticing from Lunar a lot in this matchup is putting the seal above Steve's head in the corner. Yeah, not sure if that's specifically to stop Coach D from jumping. That's not something you would expect Siegfried to do, but it, it maybe it's just uh, there so Steve will watch it. Big combo from Lunar here. Cross up just to have the trap behind him. <gasps> By villain to back throw. That was a very brave grab from Steve, but not brave enough to get away from that golden throne. Lunar again here on set point. Looking very strong. And fireball. Poke the trap. Far Heavy is going to push you a lot of mileage here. I love the empty jump. Just go for the grab right afterwards into the 2 1 4. So close. Ooh, that was tricky. I'm not sure where. I think Steve got hit overhead there. Staying safe with the ultimate. Oh, big hit I from Steve. I love that string. That was really good. Just going for the 6 XL. Finally goes for the Far Light right afterwards to open up your opponent. Going to be able to cash out. With the big juicy damage from that 100% SBA. Okay, jump gonna bait up the brave counter. Guard crush is on the table now. Steve has to escape this corner first. 5L! Just call, recognizing that Lunar has been very mix up heavy with that grab. Is this gonna be able to kill? Are we living? No! Lunar gonna be able to shut you down completely. 2 0. Oh, moving on to loser quarter side of things. And Coach Steve going down with a seventh place finish. That was a really oh, good confirm. Really good confirm from Lunar. Yes. Uh, because had no BP left, so couldn't just do Raging Strike, Raging Chain, Raging Strike, Raging Chain, and had to kind of route into that ultimate hula hoop, all bounce, full combo, good awareness. Lunar going to yeah. advance. I'm still not over that uh, challenging close slide that uh, Steve did at the end there, right? Because there's been so many times when Lunar or just Cagliostros in general will run up to their opponent and immediately try to like jump Golden Throne, right? Yep. And uh, debate out like a grab. And that time he's just like, I'm just stopping your jump completely with the 5L. Very brave, be, be able to stop that. It also stuffs out grab if you do it a little bit fast enough. But Steve gonna be able to go down seventh place finish. Congrats to him getting a top eight in this bracket. But we gotta move on to the next side of things. We got Vermilion versus Senpai Spider for Loser's Quarters. Yep, Loser's Quarters going. Senpai sticking with the Matera. Doesn't want the 2B mirror, I think. I would think Matera, uh, Matera yeah, has pretty good look into this matchup. Uh, really probably forces a lot of that skill gauge out of 2B early to try to get through what Matera's trying to do. And then similarly, Matera can just throw projectiles to beat everything but the grappling hook. Yeah, the only thing Matera has to wait for in the long range is for her cooldown to come back if she uses like EX or if dodges the arrow. Like yeah. Vermillion 2B now has to wait for like all that skill oh, gauge. What but good counter heavy. Skill Gage is back, and 5M doing a lot of work here, too. This should be a pretty easy kill. Just Raging Strike, Raging Chain twice. Oh, sorry. We're still... We still haven't started Juggle Limit, and Matera is already dead. So, if you're willing to spend, this character will still get you the damage. I just go for the simple normals right afterwards. Vermillion off to a strong start. Clash to start it off, and Vermillion just kept smashing. Whoa, that was, that was a unique... Are you serious? Too nasty. Vermillion's 2B is, is showing us that this character is not out of the running yet. Homie's actually playing near Automata. <laughs> hey, first good hit from Senpai Spider here. Gonna chase it all the way to the corner with the EX arrow. Far Heavy not connecting. Maybe wanted a close heavy there. Dodging the, the grappling hook. Again, that is the thing that got it started for Vermillion last time. Senpai not disallowing it this time around. We're doing a lot of command hops to kind of be a little bit whimsical with how we're going with these approaches, but now chip kills is definitely going to be on the table. If you don't start dodging now. Still has the enough health to be able to block one more swing, but doesn't even matter. We catch you going for the jump, and that's going to be Senpai taking away round two. Senpai using a lot more ultimate arrows in that round, and it definitely paid off to good effect. That slowdown in combination with how much faster it just comes out from Matera stuffed that grappling hook twice in that round. Yeah. Vermillion's been doing this really good thing with uh, going for the unique in the middle of the block string to kind of ch uh, call out a challenge from the opponents. We've seen this all day today, and it's coming out twice already in game number one. 
Man, this, this is actually a kill. Pretty easy combo here, just into super fast round for Vermillion, taking game one against Senpai Spider. Gonna give you that perfect to end things off, maybe do a little bit of mental damage for that game number two. Uh, you know it's gotta get, catch uh, Senpai sweating a little bit. Yeah, thinking about it, Senpai sitting on the rematch button, not sure if he wants to wager the mirror. Maybe an Uno. Maybe just needs a second. Because I think that round two looked pretty good for Senpai. I don't think, like, you need any kind of big material adjustment. Going to go back mm. to the room. The suspense is on. Will it will be the mirror or will it be Uno? Or are we just sticking with the material? We just want a little bit mirror. of a set. It is the mirror. Too right. neat. So you saw it here first, Wazdi. Open number 16. 2B versus 2B in top six. Two bros have hope. Battle one. Um, <laughs> all 2B colors look the same, so I don't know what to rename them. Um, pipe, pipe, and sword. Oh, Vermillion has pipe. pipe. You're right, yeah. Vermillion has pipe. So why do they look Which, so similar? Wait, what, what in the world? Yeah, well, because it's, uh, <laughs> you can't deviate too far from the character. <laughs> yeah, unless it's 2P, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, here we go. Vermillion on the pipe, Senpai on the classic sword. So this matchup uh, can be very funny. Yeah, this matchup's <laughs> wacky, especially for a mirror. Like, it, it really is. The character also offers a lot of freedom in how you want to play her. But yeah, her tools deal with her tools quite well. <laughs> yeah, but in both directions. The best counter is the character itself, so. Coming right back in here to do a, a significant amount of damage. Senpai in a really good spot, putting pipe, uh, Vermillion at a uh, BP depth. <laughs> Embody your weapon. Be, be the ball. Be, the, be, become the ball. Yeah. Become the ball. Uh, first big hit, uh, for, excuse me, first round off that big uh, laser from Senpai Spider. Able to block it out here. And yeah, uh, uh, pretty much everything 2B can do to you on block is going to be minus, unless it's turning into a tricky reset. So Senpai Spider just deciding to wait it out and then challenge on these minus frames. That's working out for him. Already having these spot dodges ready to rock. Calls out the dash in with a simple normal. Not going to be able to get too much off of that unique, but we're coming right back at you. Beats the Brave counter with that uh, by view. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna be a meaty hit, and we're cashing it out with the Skybound Art. Send the lasers, take away the BP, and now Senpai has full meter, one more diamond to play with in case we also want to go for a Brave counter, but looks like we're just gonna hold these blocks until we find the opening, recognizing that we're gonna try to be a little greedy after those bullets. Big hit just taking the knockdown, not electing to spend anything there with Senpai. Wants to get the kill off this hit. Unfortunately, that'll not work out for him. 5M will connect for Vermilion. Raging Strike, Raging Chain. Ties it up. Vermillion barely had enough reader for that uh, raging thing too. Was that 37%? Empty jump. Grapple. Senpai almost never going for the grapple. Probably deciding doesn't want to spend the skill gauge for something that will almost certainly get dodged. Vermillion willing to do it though. Oh, yeah. rock. And look at the skill gauge difference here too. Senpai has so much to play with compared to Vermillion, and now Vermillion is stuck in the corner. Ooh, unfortunate dodge the whiff cancel on five mmm will give vermilion a chance here both of them are just running into each other Oi! dodges mid mid string canceling into that but this is gonna this might kill you get raging oh no excuse me it's not in the combo didn't believe in getting that 25 percent just yet now it has enough for that raging chamber a little bit too late <gasps> oh comes right back in with the tether stuffs out the difference Closes the distance, and Vermillion gonna take away that set 2-0 over Senpai. Even with the counter pick from Senpai, that was looking like that might have been the answer, but Vermillion just held strong and took that W. But congrats to Senpai Spider for taking home a fifth place finish at this tournament. Yeah, it was working really well, and just that last interaction, Senpai went for the 2-2-U, something he's been pretty fond of this entire bracket. Uh, just Vermillion was already doing grappling hook, and yeah. anything projectile oriented is gonna lose to that. Using up a lot of that skill gauge. Definitely feeling that skill gauge nerf from previously. That's a big change for a character. Like, you know, yeah. we make jokes about how, like, oh, no, Grand technically got nerfed because the 6XL nerf. That's all he's gotten. But, like, 2B can definitely feel that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's significant. That changes core routing decisions that you make with the character as well. So uh, I do like seeing that two players made it to top eight with her and are still doing the thing. So Vermillion's still in it even, so... 
Yeah. It's uh, it's good to see. Yeah, good to see uh, 2B uh, taking those nerfs and still guaranteeing themselves a top four finish in this bracket. And I know what we are saying. Hey, if you get top four, do you get money? Well, if you guys head on over to the exclamation point match arena, you guys can help top four get paid out. All we need is $150 to get up there. I know it's a daunting task. We're still about $97.50 away, but as a community, I know we can do it. I know we, you guys are part of the gotcha game community. You guys already know how to spend money. You know what I'm saying? Like all you gotta do, swipe that credit card, not on the gotcha, but on the players. It's a guaranteed five-star pull if you put money in this uh, in oh, this match, Reno. Yes, that SSR is coming your way. I promise. Yeah. Okay, Rialzo versus Lunar. Characters as expected. Anila versus Cagliostro. So this will be a, a fun matchup, right? Because we don't really get to see Anila that much in the past, but because of these buffs coming out, Riazzo feeling way more comfortable with the character, especially with ultimate sheep buff. Being able to combo off of ultimate sheep is almost a death sentence for their opponent. Yeah, historically, Kag would just stop Anila from doing anything. And now the, that ultimate sheep as a whiff punish is on the table and may, makes it a lot more threatening. So we'll see what Riaz is able to do with it. Lunar gonna get the first hit though. Yeah, it's kind of like with a lot of matchups where you, you kind of play a little bit more aggressive until your opponent gets 50 meter, but now especially against Riazzo. But the thing is, uh, she can't get uh, Ultimate Sheep set up until we close a little bit of distance here. This might be the opportunity to go for him. By the Elephant Lunar not trusting that that was a safe turn. Wow! Yo! Don't really see ultimate command jump that often. Like, I was not expecting that side of approach, but Lunar's already on the raid. Look at that level five rock coming your way, forcing out a jump from Riazzo. Ooh, goes for the jump of Throne, trying to stay safe here. Ultimate Sheep coming in, that's a free turn. Yeah, the ultimate turn skip. It is now my turn to go. She played the neutral for me. Like, shout outs to Boston Bluebeat for the raid. Thank you for coming in, Raiders. How was Uni? We are in our top. Six losers quarterfinals, Lunar versus Riazzo. Some other banger matches waiting in the wings. Lunar taking round one. The goats from Boston coming through. We appreciate y'all, but here we go. Jumping right back into losers quarters. Has the spear and the trap on deck here. Oh, uses the, uses the 2U to break that trap. That is a long recovery move, and Lunar taking full advantage of that. And you're that desperate to get rid of this seal. I'm going to get the punish. Oh no, opts to go for the reversal. No, Huge punish coming your way. We, you, no matter how much health you had left, you were taking a lot of damage in that process. Lunar taking away game one from Riazzo. Lunar looking very strong tonight uh, in this bracket. Riazzo oh. going to character select, Is running the through the mid screen. This might be the six. He does. Oh, do it. Do some push ups. Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Lock in, lock in. Do some push ups. Yeah. Hey, you gotta get the, the adrenaline running, right? Coming right back here. Oh, with the oh, okay. okay, yeah. Okay, right back at it. Right back at it. Hey, you know, uh, th that is definitely a mental reset, right? You get out there, you do some push-ups, get the blood pumping, get the blood th uh, flowing, and come back into game number two stronger than ever. We'll see. I'm not sure what kind of adjustments Rialzo needs to make because Lunar's offense is looking so clean right now, and even in the mid-screen, any errant button leads to stuff like this. And here's like the struggle, right? Where uh, Anila would normally likes to play from long range, wants to, you know, or mid mid to long range because of the projectiles and the long range of normals. But against the likes of Cagliostro, who gets a lot of setup off of you with being playing patient, like all these traps, sometimes you gotta get in there and play aggressive. And I think that's why we're seeing so many of these command jumps now. Yeah, a lot of command jumps, a lot of it. 2U is still on the table for Riazzo, looking for pretty much max range of it. We might see it again here in a second. Lunar definitely looking out for it with the way that he's keeping distance. Yeah, and you're noticing the option that Lunar's going for is rock build. Whenever you build up rock, you put that in front of you. That can block the sheep when it's high enough level. Oh my god! Oh my days. Just guard crush. Not good. ready for it. Good nights and good luck, soldier. Lunar taking away that first round in game number two in a dominant fashion, calling him out with a raging strike. Yeah, just one away is Lunar. And wow, it's a perfectly spaced spear into the trap. Gonna get a full confirm there. Yeah, the medium spear actually drags the opponent towards you, so you can manipulate that spear, whether it's the medium or the EX version. You can hit them wherever, based on the situation, wherever that seal is. Just gonna float. I like that answer. Float to, to and teleport to stay in the air. Get away from the sheep. 
That was scary because we saw the double spirit coming up, dragging you ever so closer towards that seal. Reversals to get out of dodge. Oh. Big punish coming in. We're cashing it out on the raging chain just to guarantee your combo because that was kind of wacky. Oh my god, the 6 6 H also continuing that onslaught. And we got here to play with. Was that a dropped combo? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the dance. The oh brave, brave counter, brave counter, brave counter. You are, you are out of health. You can get chipped at this point. We the dodge! Reversals. Saw it coming, goes to the spot. Are you there? You're out of meter. You're out of BP. You're taking 50% additional damage from this guy. Everything's coming oh. up here. Leostro. Lunar taking that set. Good lord, what was that ending? That was the Just bad so ending for An Anila there. <laughs> that was no BP, no hope. Lunar, Lunar has clutch factor like a like a lot like no, not few few other players have that kind of clutch factor and when you're in chip range just calling out the B, the dp just saying like i'm gonna spot dodge here i have the resource if i need it that was that was awesome i mean when you're gonna make it to loser semis fighting against vermilion I cannot believe the amount of brave counters that happened, and they just kept blocking yeah. each other's brave counters. But <laughs> when you block a brave counter, you're it's still your turn. Like like it, even though you get hit by it, you're still like close to them. So it's it's really hard to like actually brave out a brave counter unless you like stagger your pressure. But they were desperate to take their turns. Yeah, we we actually we see that a lot in like Japanese high level play is when you block a brave counter, like you bait it of sorts and block it. The best thing to do is brave counter because you, then you'll be plus six instead of them being plus six. But yeah, good stuff to Riazzo taking fifth in this bracket with the Anila the whole way. Love to see it. I know that's a character that they've talked about enjoying far more than like the, the likes of Six. So good to see them able to take it that far. Yeah, you can definitely see it in their play too. Cheetah. So really good stuff to them. But we got to move on back over to winners finals. We have now entered the best three of five Believe territory. Have a nice day on the Jita facing off against Salt Prophet with Lowane. Yeah, Lowane doing a lot of work here. Uh, but I think Hava is the type of player that can definitely dismantle the stuff that uh, Luane offers. So we'll see how he's he's approaching this. So Gina being a Shoto, can do a lot, multitude of play styles. But with Have a Nice Day specifically, we are going for the rushdown cell against the likes of Luane. This definitely works out. It's really difficult for Salt to try to find the answer to gather without spending some valuable resource in the process. And we're going to spend it on that SBA to dish out a heaps amount of damage. Hava was perfect spacing away from that EX parry to be able to dodge it after the fact. And Salt Prophet just throwing everything at Hava to try to get out of this corner. We finally found a way out using the parry. Now it's time for Salt Prophet to try to set up shop. But the thing is, he can't even get to 100 meter at this point. He's at such low health. I think that's what... That's kind of like the win con right now for Salt Prophet all day is getting 100 meter and going into Human Pyramid, but we'll see if Have a Nice Day can actually deal with it. Here we go. Have game time. Have has got the reactions for sure. We'll see if I'm a liar. Yep. Just blocked yeah. every single one, and now Salt Prophet is completely out of reach when he decides that final BP. Oh, flips yep. through the bros. That was super nice. Yeah, definitely hyper aware of this matchup. Has landed before. Have a nice day. Now completely out of BP. Can take 50% additional damage. So Salt Prophet gets one additional hit on top of this. The chip mm. damage has to avoid it. And we're healing in the process. Healing. Putting a lot of pressure on Have a nice day to make a Ultimate move. Bros. Ultimate bros. Ultimate bros. Oh, oh wow. my just god. Goes for anything. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. Oh. Start. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Loane, uh, this character gives me agita, dude. This is why this character upsets I, me. I can't believe Salt Prophet <laughs> got two specials out of that. That was insane. You, like, you, you, you beat the first mini game, but we still have the second one up to deck. And honestly, when you have your opponent at one HP, that's the best thing for Loane to do because it's so easy to chip kill them with that character. Absolutely. And. I mean, Salt Prophet gained so much extra HP just by virtue of eating that round, too, that Habit did more than Luane's health bar, so... Salt Prophet leaning into every aspect of what Luane can do to troll the opponent. Habit on good offense here, though. Only needs one more. Using the Catalina bot to give yourself some distance. Oh, we tried to parry right through that, but that is a multi-hit, so you're gonna get called out by Brave Counters, the guaranteed one. Brave Things counter, are looking counter. really tough here. Eat? Bros? Oh my god, Onslaught. Gita just old boying through the entire 
crowd just smacking everybody aside. Didn't care about the 6XL nerfs whatsoever. You're, all three of you are hitting it. Looked like you just saved a cat from traffic. Okay, dodged okay. the fireball, but still punished by the 6XL afterwards. Oh, wow. It's another one in the process. Gets rid of the cat bot on top of that and keeps applying that pressure. Bates out the parry. Spot dodge, but can't bait out the reversal. Throw through the, the bros. You know, I've never noticed that if one of the bros is out and you go for a grab, he doesn't appear in the grab. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that was, I just never noticed that before. So soulful. Yeah, I love it. Okay, grab from Hava. Gonna use the fireball to approach. Big hit. Yeah, OBP it. should be safe here, but this is SBA. I don't know if this is gonna kill. I don't think nah. it does. If we're gonna be able to live. Probably wakes right. up with uh, some kind of Mario Party here. No, it takes a second. Oh. Uh, I, I, I can, can guarantee you. I can guarantee you that Cell Prophet was victory. definitely feeling like, a, okay, if I go for him in Pyramid, I can just die. Because you can die in that form. Right. And if you go for uh, Mommy instead, then, you know, it's uh, you have to rely on your opponent not knowing what to do. And I'm pretty sure he thinks that Have a Nice Day knows exactly how to deal with that uh, particular special. Yeah, I do think that one, the little individual attacks are easier to react to. And if you know how to react to them, you will get it every time. Human Pyramid's a little quicker. Ava looking really clean here, though. Going to get the corner. Raging Strike builds 100. SBA. This one might kill. It's looking very close. If not, we get that kill. Yes, we do have a nice day. Clutching that one out. Not even giving Prophet the opportunity to spend meter. No, and sometimes that's the best way to kill Loane is to make sure that he just can't activate it. Just don't let him play. Like Persona style, you, you hit them to right before Awakening, and then you do the combo that kills them through the Awakening. Yeah. Just a, oh, nice DP. <laughs> don't even give him the opportunity. Here we go. Coming back in with another dash like Going to be a very good combo starter. EX DP to extend that combo reset time. Good time, 6XL, 6XL. Well, Prophet, looking a little scared to use the counter as well. There's only minus four. And the parry is guaranteed on 6XL. You can't you can't OS that one because you can't spot dodge out of 6XL. Right. E? Oh, tries to go for the frame trap close heavy. Not quite getting it though. We're gonna jump above that to force have a nice day to waste one of the resources trying to create <laughs> some distance from your opponent too. Minus frames into reversal, the classic. Doesn't have a hundred. Oh, this is dead. You're... You are so donezo. Have a nice day. Take away game number two in this race to three. Yeah, immediate rematch from Soul Prophet. Wants to get right back in there, but Hava's the one with all the momentum here, keeping a really aggressive playstyle on this Cheetah. EX Rekka all the way to the corner, plus a reset situation here to follow. Oh, oh gross. God. Making him lose two BP in the process. That, that was a sick replay if I ever seen one. Oh, now you're only a one diamond. Could do that same reset even. See what he goes for. The grab. Two M after the grab working really well. I don't think Lewayne has a really reliable button to press there. And again with the damage buff here, plenty of leftovers. Have a nice yeah. day on match point. Difficult way for him to get out of this pressure. Right? You definitely sense that Prophet is looking for answers against Have a Nice Day. So I guess maybe playing aggressive start this time around might be the answer because it gave you corner pressure. Yeah, something to try. Hasn't gotten one chance to really eat or set up Catbot. So might as well try to uh, brawl it out. Have it having none of that though. And, uh, easy come, easy go. That corner is now long gone from Salt Prophet's reach. Have a Nice Day ending the auto combo with the heavy variety to call out Prophet's blocking. Whiffs, but recovers in time to get a 2U there. So Prophet, 6XL, run in. Oh, wow, and that confirmed. And we got the wall bounce, all because Saw Prophet opted to call in his homies. Have a nice day, just shut them down completely with that dash light. Now he's gonna eat up so much damage, still enough to be able to survive, but for how long, we're calling it in. But this this is literally, uh, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. Try to see if you can block all this. You're definitely not going to get chipped out or anything. Have it just running in. 
wants to take maybe some health damage to be right next to Salt Prophet once this recovers, but is going to be full screen. Gets the EX Fireball attempt! Oh, they almost killed! That was really scary. Oh, this is uh, a big uh, punish. Have a nice day. Gonna be able to eat the price because we finally see Cell Prophet put a point on the board. Alrighty. Stepping into this next down. round here. Not gonna get the corner. Not gonna get the wall bounce, rather, but we'll get corner with this. Plus frame. Very scary situation to go in, so why not spend the BP? Get you out of there. Full mm -hmm. key counter on the scramble situation. Ooh, low auto combo finisher. We don't. I feel like at this level we don't see a lot of those auto combo like variants at the end. But Hava has gone for both in this set. I guess why not? If you see yourself like in the middle of the block string, might as well just go for a different variation. But Prophet is spending his BP like they are just candy you can get for free. Because we're about close to touch. be able to go for Human Pyramid. We're going to be able to bust it out. Yes, sir. Wake up, Human Pyramid. Here we go. But haven't I say has shown dominance in this. He's yet to get caught by those knees or the overhead. We might see a super here. It's going to say a well-timed super. But oh, what a gun! That was so sick. You're taking 50% additional damage in the process. You're eating so Whoa. much. Look at all that red. And you have no resources to play defense. Nothing to reversal with. No brave counters. You've got to run away. Jeez, max range. Have a nice day confirming off of that far medium. 3-0 over Soul Profit. Going into winner's side of grand finals. Guaranteed top two. Looking really clean on the Jita today. Dude, Saul Prophet was trying to run away from that ending, and unfortunately, have a nice day running away with that set. Like you said, looking insanely good with that Jita. Has yet to drop a single game in top eight by itself, and is sitting very pretty over in grand finals of things. Yeah, confident in the Jita. Definitely a good pick, and it's definitely working out for him, so love to see it. All right, coming up next, though, Got to take a little bit of a trip down over to the lower side of things. Loser semis. We got Vermilion, who's been rocking the 2B, facing off against Lunar. Another Cagliostro to face off against. Before we jump into that, guys, you can head on over to that Matcharino, exclamation point Matcharino, if you guys want to check it out. All you got to do is head on over there and donate some cash. You're feeling a little bit generous. There might be some quests to complete. And if not, we're just happy you guys are here to catch the action. But if we managed to hit that $150 pot, uh, we can be able to pay out the rest of these four players. Yeah, so if you like who is on the screen right now, definitely help us out with a contribution. Thank you again for using all the codes as well. More than anything, that helps show that people are supporting these brackets and gets us more support from the match arena. Right, Revillian versus Lunar. Okay, we're back. Yeah, I had a little bit of a glitch there, but we are <laughs> back in the action. Nothing to... You know, just, just, just you blink and you miss it. You know, so with this matchup, we've seen this before. Vermillion is definitely going to be the one that's going to be more of the aggressor against the likes of Lunar. For sure. And Lunar, uh, excuse me, Vermillion likes to play that role uh, versus Senpai, who would stay away from the 2B. Uh, Vermillion is not afraid to just get in there, be close, uh, far mediuming, uh, using all the skill as much as possible. Wow, that hit! Can't believe that. I'm actually a big fan of Vermillion going for the back jump to block through the seal so it can't be a setup for the future. Definitely being aware of this matchup and exactly what the win conditions are for Lunar. <laughs> yeah, a little risky, but the distance made it a good call. Vermillion taking round one pretty quickly. And yeah, that 236M is something we're going to see a lot too. That will be the tool that stops Lunar from setting up from full screen. It's a really fast full screen game. Out one. of skill builds. Did she build zero skill off of auto combo now? That's that so wild. Would be such a tragedy. I'm seeing like no skill gain, but uh, we know that that has been heavily nerfed. Lunar with a chance here, but the 2L Rapid Strike. Raging Strike, excuse me. 2L Rip, Raging Strike OS. Gonna take it for Vermilion super fast. That was a very quick game coming up from Vermilion. Pretty much just cleaning up shop, disallowing Lunar from being able to set up literally anything. Yeah, it's, it was just a 236M, get close and run offense for Vermilion. Making it really quick. Oh, double jump over the trap. 
Yeah, get me away from there. Good cross up coming out from Lunar. Not enough to get, not close enough to be able to get the wall bounce. We saw instead of coming. Now we're spending the meter on the reversal. Ooh, nice confirm. Oh, what a just a big whip punish coming out. And another punish on the reversal. Oh my God, Lunar! You can't guess set. right. You He's can't in guess it's right. Yes, <laughs> can't guess right. <laughs> Every answer dodge. is wrong. Using the spot dodge to try to get around the blue, but Vermillion was ready for it with the 2-2-U. Okay, right back into the corner. This is Lunar's home. This entire set, Vermillion catching them toes, running up there, gets this crouching light, bounces Lunar up to increase that damage 20-fold. Tries to spot dodge through. Lunar finally getting some offense here. Gets the TK teleport to bait out whatever Vermillion was trying to do. Probably a throw attack. Oh, you saw get them them. actually jump up there to try to match Runa. Yeah, we'll see that sometimes when 2B double jumps, she can't block anymore. Okay. Big hit here. Ultimate skill. Trap. Bait. That was a really good reset from Lunar, and because we landed it and it was successful, we're able to close out the round. Drop the statue. Beautiful statue. Whoever, whoever made that. Uh, X-Men. Expert. Uh, Craftsmanship. Hey, jump, just jumping across the screen is Vermillion Lunar with no anti airs. Back throw. Always hate to see a whip grab and to get grabbed. Uh, one, one of the worst scenarios you've ever seen in Grand Blue. Yeah, that's tragic. 2 through 6 m to clear the screen. H punish, but not counter hit, so no confirm. It seals aware. It ver I love how Vermillion slowed down the pace immediately the second he recognizes there is a seal behind him. Rec just prepared for Lunar to run up and go for a grab. 2H, good reaction. Been thrown. TP baited. Hey, Lunar's still in this fight. Okay, that game one didn't even happen. Destroying Vermillion in the final round there to bring this up to a 1 1 even set. Victory. But because I don't see the word Losers Finals, it's semi finals. This is only a best two of three. Yeah, so this will be the last match between these two players, no matter which way it goes. Lunar seems to have adapted to how Vermillion wants to play. Let's see if Vermillion's able to close it out in time. Ooh, grab bait again working out for Lunar with a big confirm off that trap. Trap in front of you, what's the answer here? Looking for the opportunity to go for a 2L. We just simply go for a block, recognizing that Seal's eventually come back into it. We finally go for the reversal to build up some distance. And no fear from Vermillion to go with that reversal. Block. Another Defense brave counter. Yeah, just trying to, to get off turn. Me. Ooh, going uh, in the high in the high pressure situation, Vermillion going to the run reset again. You can mash on that, but if you're not ready for it, you're going to these two two Ls. Oh, oh my oh. good God, Vermillion getting away with a murder with that exchange. Good Lord. She rolled all the way around, and that jumping H hit the teleporting Cagliostro, leading into a reset situation for a counter hit. Far heavy. Vermillion on match point. Getting a lot of mileage out of that jumping view. The, just the overall swing, or jumping heavy. That, oh, that little ball swing is so good. Okay. Pressure. Okay, we're gonna meet you up there in the air. You don't want to give 2B the airspace. This is a no-fly zone. Don't disallow her from being able to play the game that she wants to play. And Lunar coming back in with another grab. We've turned this into a strike throw mini game until we see Vermillion jump one more time and get a cross up. AA. Set up. Hyper Sentinel Force gonna point at her. One more guess? No, probably not. No, not enough skill gauge. Double throw tech from Lunar. Desperately wanting that grab, but now we put you into danger territory. Literally, Vermillion just needs that one more hit to be able to get this. Lunar desperate to not give it to you. Oh, and there it is. Vermillion finds the swing, gets the raging chain, and takes out Lunar and Loser's semis. Going on over to Loser's finals. Lunar putting up one hell of a fight, though. Going down at the fourth place finish here at the WASDE Open 16. Really respectable placing for how stacked this bracket's been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good performance from Lunar, as usual. Um, coming in at fourth there. Vermillion putting 2B in top three in our bracket. Uh, Going to yeah. be fighting against Salt Profit now, which is a rematch from winner's side top eight. It went 2-0 Salt Profit's favor. Hmm. I'm sure Vermillion wants this run back. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that was kind of a stomp. I, if I if we were like... Yeah, that wasn't was, pretty. It was, that, a, it, was, uh, it was tough because...
there wasn't really a way to manage skill gauge and stop Luane from setting up. Yeah. So maybe uh, Vermilion has taken some time to recuperate since that set. Maybe watch over some of those VODs to get back in there and see how what we're going to bring to the table this time around against the likes of Lowane. Because I feel like the long range pl game plan is just not going to work against him. No, I think Vermilion's going to have to get up in there, bait the counters, maybe uh, OS the counters, and then just rush down, dodge the mini game. Yeah, not get hit by Human Pyramid is a very important. Uh, it takes some notes from Have a Nice Day, who was like on point for that. <laughs> Homie did not get hit by a single swing from that. Yep. Always on the lookout for it. Yeah, so it should be tough. And it's also a first of three, so like, Loane plays the endurance game pretty well. Mm. Um, So we'll see if Vermillion is able to keep up with it. One thing I've thought, like, in my play with 2B is, Two unlike B. some characters in this game, there's only so many things she can do out of a block string. And it, it can be hard to not be predictable, especially in a longer set. So we'll see how Vermillion kind of skirts that as well. Okay, so Prophet's defense is good. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Yeah, Loser's Finals coming up here again. This is a race to three. And Salt Prophet already on a race to take home this rap first round. I'm going to use everything in the corner just to get a throw, but still worth it. Cooldown's coming back up. Wow, the homie was still there. Yeah, unfortunate for Vermillion. You know, you, you waste your valuable resource on a brave counter just to get caught by one of the bros. Very unfortunate. Still has low health. We just got all. Now here's the HPA. Can we block it? Did we learn? We going for spot that just to, to deny chip, but the fourth swing finds its its mark. You went low four times. This character. <laughs> hey, you know, you just go for it. Yeah, I mean, the it's, ultimate it's mix up is no mix up. I think it's the harder one to block. I mean, Justin Wong went low for 12 years and nobody ever blocked it. So, you know, it's a lesson to be learned there. Oh, counters the missile. And that's five skill bars spent on that. A, A, mix up time. Takes the safe jump. Fades the counter. Oh, oh the best God. move in the game. Yeah, we haven't really seen that too often from Salt Prophet too. The, the, the ultimate tire wheel very strong like instant like here it comes tool better be prepared yeah you got to be ready for it and like even if you hit low aim that's that thing's still coming so like super scary vermilion getting a good hit here though gonna spend basically everything to get this damage has no skill gauge to run this mix up strike throw on the table oh Big hit. good good back up into the normal to be able to get that hit take away that second round from salt profit already putting up a better fight than in winter semis Battle three. Oh, the round start awesome <gasps> sauce. Okay. The JL. Oh, Lunar, thank you for the raid. Yeah, good stuff in bracket tonight. Welcome, Raiders. Hope you enjoyed watching. Yeah, congrats on fourth, Lunar. You did good. Okay, so Prophet sending everything at Vermilion. Vermilion pressing 5M a lot more, and that is definitely working out for them. Yeah, okay, reversal. Get that out of here. You're not jumping at me anymore. Vermilion responding. With some block string. Brave counter to relieve that pressure. Uh oh. Might be an empty air. Uh, not quite. Vermillion landing just the nick of time. Okay, oh Vermillion's holding it down. We finally got through it. Vermillion adapting. Love to see it. We jump right over the brothers and now Prophet has no meter to play with here, but doesn't oh, matter no. because we got wall bounces. Oh yeah. You don't need meter if you got EX skills in the corner. Yeah, I mean, again, we see the situation where, like, even after the Human Pyramid, there's just no punish from the opponent. It's, you know, it's, it's very low risk to go for, and the reward is so high. 5H is going to make contact here, though, spending everything. Yeah, from that distance, still going to be able to connect it. That's a lot of health down on the table. A lot of damage to be spent. Going for reversal to get it, but uh, Salt Pop, a little bit too far away to go for a punish. So Prophet calling out what looked like a brave counter with a spot dodge there. Then not able to punish the DP. Missiles holding down the air though. Yes. Opting to turn this into a braving chain confirmed because it's kind of a wacky hurt box. When in doubt, braving chain, you know, just resets the entire string. He got to eat a three course meal during that ultimate Catalina run. I mean, it makes you hungry. Yeah. Like, I'm a little famished after watching that one. Okay, raging strike. You had the shock that we didn't. Uh, oh, we were out of BP. Never mind. Yeah, none BP. Just uh, checkmate. Yeah. 
So Vermillion getting around in pretty much all these games just has to close it out. Yeah, really, like you said, going on the offensive and just 5-Ming through every kind of setup that Salt Prophet's trying to establish. It's a, a, the standing medium is a really good tool in 2B's kit because it has a lot of range, can easily chain to other things, and honestly, all of them are just really good. Yeah, it's, it's super good, and uh, it's what Vermillion has to do, and I actually don't know how Salt Prophet will call it out. Very nice fake, uh, fake safe jump. It's not like Luane has a button he can just push out to stop by that. So that was a really good reversal before this one because it put Salt Prophet into chip kill range. And yep. so Vermillion just let it rip a second time to be able to get the kill. Yeah, saying, I, don't, I don't even care if I take 40% here. I'm, I'm fine. Now you're in chip range now. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Good stuff. Stuffing out that Catalina bot puts you right back into the corner. Vermillion does have full skull gauge. I don't think he wanted the side swap. Awkward situation here, but that is where Salt Prophet thrives. Ooh, rare, rare drop. Yeah, you know what happens when you drop? We just go over there, we get a free hit, but at what cost? Okay. Uh, never mind. We, fighting, we, we done so. fighting the near automata boss, uh, the yeah. human pyramid. Cannot stagger on hit. Playing on that critical difficulty, the one where you just die in one hit. The impossible mode. Gonna get all of Soul Prophet's BP here though with this SSBA, so. This is actually a lot closer than it looks. One clean hit here with full skill gauge. So Prophet will certainly die. Yes. Oh my god. Didn't even need it. Oh, Only needed three of those squares. <laughs> three hits. Yeah. <laughs> Standing million, heavy, looking quite comfy now with what Soul Prophet wants to do. Excellent neutral jump over the X Awesome Sauce. Yeah, uh, Vermillion's making a lot of mileage out of those jumping heavies, right? Because not only is it good for hitting your front, it's a really good cross-up tool because it's from so far away. And speaking of getting hit by so far away, Standing Heavy does that as well, especially on a counter hit. Can be able to convert this into a lot of damage and get a little bit of skill gain for trouble a second time. No way, Vermillion cashing it out and taking away that game. Standing Heavy was the name of the game that round. Vermillion just swinging, honestly. Uh, it's, it's working, like, not trying to play a slow game against this Loane. Mm. So, That's what you know, he wants. instead of saying, I'm not going to let you set up because I'm going to be using projectiles or I'm going to be, like, full screen and setting up myself, it's, I'm not going to let you set up because I am in your face. And, uh, yeah, able to just switch gears like that. Super good uh, stuff for me. Something I noticed from Salt Prophet, by the way, he did the exact same thing against Have a Nice Day, is when it came down to the wire when you're on like set point, he starts off the round really aggressive, going for mm. EX Awesome Sauce into EX Parry. Yep, gonna get 2 2 U here. Big empty jump low. Wait a minute. Finally parrying out his Soul Prophet, but that's still such a big risk to decide to try to do oh, that. Big speaking hit. of big risk, dude, that jump getting eaten alive. Vermillion on set point. Million looking to move into Grand Finals loser side, getting guaranteed second. Wow, the whiff cancel. And uh -oh. then just goes low off the plus frames. Could bait a parry here. Yeah, not going to be too much damage, but it's enough to be able to send him a message. We got the high parry, not even the EX variety, just to get a, relieve some of that pressure. Went for the grappling hook there, but the missiles were there. We're too close. Now we got meter for salt. We easily go for the human pyramid to try to call you out. Probably gonna wake up with it. It could wake up with it. Could also wake up with Perry again. The cooldown is back. Not much skill gauge on the side of Vermillion. It's the Perry. Oh, I love that movement after the missiles. Position yourself to get the correct follow up afterwards. And uh, Salt is actually putting Vermillion into the kind of the Oh my god, standing heavy gonna... again! I'm just going to swing my giant sword, and if you're in range, that's your problem. Vermillion taking it 3-1 over Salt Prophet. Salt Prophet going down with a third place finish. A very good placement here at this brag. A very stacked. Congratulations to you doing it with Lowane. I know he was looking for that, you know, that grand final spot was ever so close to it two times, but still got getting top three with Lowane in today's meta. Nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Got our grand finals queued up here. It's going to be... Not the grand finals we expected. No, certainly not. <laughs> uh, it's going to be... Have a nice day on winner side versus Vermillion on loser side. Jita versus 2B, most likely. 
Is that a dog? Yeah, it's uh the, is that a doggy? Dog dog on cam. Dog was apparently Animal. hitting the stream deck as well. Animal alert. Oh my god. <laughs> They're so cute. I'm a huge fan of animals, man. Oh, I, I, I love dogs. I love cats. The whole the whole shebang. Okay, here we go. Last game of the set, or of the tournament, excuse me. Last set of the tournament. Yeah, I got there. Uh, it's going to be Habit versus Vermillion. They have not gotten to play in this bracket yet. Uh, it was Soul Prophet who knocked Vermillion to losers. Yeah, managed to dodge each other for so long, but now we're coming right back into it. Have a nice day with advantage here. Only has to win one of these uh, best three or five sets to take home the tournament. Mm -hmm. And the way Have a Nice Day has been playing, like he has been on fire. So I, I this might be a very difficult match for Vermillion. It's going to be tough. And uh, Jita is a character that, uh, as to be like your normals are uh, contested. Like Jita is giving to be a run for her money with with her normals. So it's, de it's definitely something I could see not... Vermillion's going to not need need to be less scrappy, I'll say, uh, than in previous sets. Or Hava will probably run him over. This could be the way to play defensive in this one. But the problem is, is that Have a Nice Day has been playing really aggressive with the Jita. But hey, we got a good round start here in Grand Final. Yeah, I think that is Vermillion paying attention because Hava's been starting with the EX Fireball pretty much every round. Mm -hmm. Watching the tapes. Strike throw pressure. Stop the record early. Yeah, doesn't want to commit to the full horrible blade. Coming right back in with some normals. Escapes the gunshot. The classic. And again, that's uh, something as a 2B player to get used to post patch. 6XL with the increased recovery. If you get the U dodge on it, you get a big, way bigger punish than the guaranteed follow up. Okay. Good conversion. I like the routing here. Have a nice day putting a lot of damage. Or sorry, for me putting a lot of damage on. Have a nice day. We're we going for the vacuum? Yeah, first time we've seen it all tournament. And uh, have it with zero BP, but this might end up working out. Are you dead? Dude, we're summoning Lyria and Bahamut of the Proto variety. I think you're done for. Oh, oh what a One chance, one chance. Doesn't have much resource, though. Oh. Doesn't even matter. Jumps right back into you. Fireball right in your face. Feels like a like a maybe a delayed guard cancel is some there from Vermilion not quite just getting uh, counter hit by that fireball. Uh, I like that reversal by the way. Uh, DP is being represented in this specific matchup is really good because you know if Tubi is going to be up there because of the jump, don't try to go for the two H and bank it all in all that damage and then she just like either pod stalls or double jump. Just go for the simple reversal. Yeah, chase chase her up there. Even an air to air is better in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Gonna get super here is Vermillion. Hyper Sentinel Force. Looks like history is repeating itself here. Vermillion off to a fantastic start, but now have a nice day completely out of diamond. So at this point, one more swing will definitely do it. We're calling out your block string. We said you're predictable, and we're calling it out. So, yeah, worth noting basically anything 2B can do on block is gonna have a gap. And the only thing that really dodges. Uh, reversals like that is going to be either you follow up or like 2-2-L. So, Vermillion have, was a, able to have a call in the mall. At least they were able to call, uh, close out the round. Yes, uh, did not lose for that. Oh, 6-6-M. Oh, wow, what a whiff. That was insane spacing coming out from Vermillion, being able to get away from that Brave counter and then get a punish right afterwards. But having I say, sees the grappling hook coming, goes for the super jump heavy to be able to put you right back into the corner carry. And now you're stuck against the wall. Again, and we again. goes right for it. Not gonna get the animation, but hey, we're sending home a message here. So having I say, it's telling Vermillion to stop ending your block string pressure with Gatling Gun. Yeah, and that's the only non-skill spending way to end a block string. So in the long term, in a long set like this, if you can dissuade that early, that's a huge boon for your game plan. Mm -hmm. Ooh, base out oh, okay. the Brave counter, doesn't, doesn't make switches. Er, uh-oh. Oh what? my god, we challenged! The thing was on you and you challenged it! Have a nice day playing very brave. Brave counters to be able to try to take back your turn. We're jumping at the same time. Normal's coming out. Another brave counter. Have a nice day still has two more chip hits before dying. We're going up with a standing heavy, That's... close heavy right in front of your face. That's how you end that? That timing was immaculate from Hava because, I mean, to run all the way from down there and still get the counter close heavy on even 5L, but more likely throw. 
super definitely throw. Bag, that was yeah. definitely a throw bait because throw would have killed. It was something I you had nice to day, equally fear. Man. Yeah, so this is something I'm curious what this is going to lead Vermillion to start doing in these block strings because Hava has Vermillion's number here. We'll have to wait and see, because again, Havanice does have the meter. Nope, we're still again. sending it out, and Havanice is going to keep care. calling it out until you stop doing it with the 100 meter. Yeah, I mean, it's super worth it. You take a diamond, you get a big hit, and just the safe jump makes purchase afterwards as well. Playing around from Hava. I don't even know what Vermillion could route into differently. Maybe 2-2-A, but that's also, you know, react counterable. I, I'm not it's, sure. It, it feels kind of check, maybe. I mean, you have to just... Because even if you end the string, I don't know Jita start up on her super, but you're minus, like, 10 or more after that string. So you are not, like, safe. I mean, she closes that gap real fast, but here we go, catching them toes with the crouching light upon landing. Gonna be able to get the corner combo. Not enough to build the meter, though, to be able to try to finish it off, but now we got it. It is on the table here. Oh, and Vermilion responding oh, in kind, no. unfortunately, that was safe. Yeah, the jab recovering in time tragic because the reaction was there full raging storm at the end of this safe jump okay brave counter yeah, that's one diamond left do. for vermilion looking very scary here vermilion trying to go for the jump another brave counter just to steal that turn keep that pressure on keep the aggression vermilion spending the last one to try to steal the turn trying to beat out a brave counter in the process but have a nice day not letting it rip until just now bring out the projectile forcing out the spot dodge gets the 6-6l punish right afterwards was so afraid of getting that chip damage to put you in the chip kill range yeah really good situational awareness from have going all the way with that two up in grand finals winner side only needs one more to take this tournament we are jumping in place to avoid oh. these skills spending a skill gauge ever so slightly i feel like having a nice day's game plan has been to play passive until that skill gauge gets a little bit low and then put the pedal to the metal yeah i mean that's something you can do as soon as 2 uses one or two skills i mean yeah you, you have not much to fear you're not going to take that much damage anymore optimal okay. route coming oh. up wait we're here day. this is one more hit you're not going to build super here but this is one more hit yeah, unfortunately, couldn't get the refund, but that's okay. Vermillion responding in kind, taking some hits here in the process. Has to be careful no because shot. Have a Nice Day has Vermillion's number. You try to do anything, Skybound are coming your way. It's, I mean, it's it's perfect hit rate. Uh, you know, domain domain expansion, Skybound are guaranteed hit technique. Have a Nice Day cannot do it, a wrong move with it, and getting the they first hit of this round as well. Has yet to miss with it. That's a, that's that's incredible. Ooh, big jump over of the ultimate skill. Oh no! Drops. High pressure situation. Getting to Vermillion there. Not able to complete that combo. And VPs. Yeah. Pressure's definitely on. Haven't I seen not have enough meter for the raging chain? Ah, uh, I, I couldn't tell you. Maybe didn't. Maybe even didn't want to do it. Yeah, just wanted to play a little bit more safe. But here we go. Going right back in the center. Calls out the air to air. Literally one round away from taking home this tournament. So oh. close to it. I was going to say, don't you dare do Gatling Gun there. You know what's coming. Vermillion just no canceling the end of that string. Have on zero BP. Tries to walk under the pod, but doesn't quite get there. Vermillion showing some signs of life. Bringing that round back to here, but we're still at tournament point. Have a nice day on the advantage. Have a nice day. Casually only needs one more round here. EX Fireball not getting spot dodged. Big pressure, strike throw. Trying to get some strike throws, just hauls out the jump immediately with a DP. Another grab, puts you back in the corner. Reset, just going for the dash up to try to mix up. Holding the block on that jump, Rave counter to steal the turn. I love that just walk back while 2B does all the- What a punish! Cannot believe this. Going I'm, for another- I am floored. This is insane, gonna get a lot of damage, not enough meter to cash out into a special. But gonna go for the Brave counter, calls it out with the kick, and have a nice day. 3-0, doesn't lose a single game in top eight. Is your WASD Open 16 Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising Champion? And you know what? He's adding another first place to the docket. My homie is no stranger to getting a first place at WASD.
Absolutely not. And looking really clean with the Jita. So many cool things in that last game, too. Using the ultimate record to punish through the grappling hook, as well as just some of the, the mind games that got played through that. Uh, yeah, so I bet, but also I do want to give it up to Vermilion. Getting second with 2B, a character that a lot of people were like, nope, unplayable now. Nerf, <laughs> I can't touch this character. And showing that there's still plenty you can do with her. Definitely not as strong as she was before, but not out of the running. Like, we sensed the struggle that she was doing with, like, the skill gauge recharge, yeah. but was still able to get second place at a tournament. So that's that's saying something post-nerf, you know? So I like the adaptation from them trying to adapt to, like, how this new character plays. But at the end of the day, simple try and true Jita is the champion. Yes, very much so. Good stuff to have a... Um... And yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll just run down the top eight really quick. Have a nice day first, Vermilion second, Salt Prophet third, Lunar in fourth, Senpai Spider and Riazzo taking tied for fifth, and Destin and Coach Steve taking tied for seventh. Good stuff, everyone. Yeah, very Vermilion, fun. Rocket. Thank you for entering. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks for thanks for stopping by. It was a pleasure to watch you play tonight. Yeah. One more call out to the match arena. Uh, if you haven't. Uh, thought about contributing to that but you like what you saw tonight we can make this prize pool a little bit bigger with your contributions and click that contri contribute button or buy some merch in the store at the bottom of the page all that will go to this bracket usually that gets paid out about a day from now so sometime tomorrow this will get paid out you have tonight to make a contribution if you decide to do so and yeah that's yeah that's all she wrote guys uh Thank you so much for tuning in to a WASD online. Uh, my name's Austin La Vista. Ryro, it was a pleasure casting with you. Yeah, likewise. This is the first time we got to cast together. I had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my name's Ryer. Uh, you can catch me at Ryer on stream on Twitter. If you want to see my horrible posts. And I also stream on Twitch, Ryer VT. I stream a lot of Grand Blue now. I've, I've really fallen for this game especially after rising i liked vanilla a lot but rising lets me grind ranked which is what i really like to do on fighting games yes same so, <laughs> yeah i like to grind ranked so uh you can catch me playing grimnir and percival on my channel over there man well I, that's it from us imperious club any last thoughts um just that these are weekly um signups are already up for next week um Start.gg slash WASD underscore GVVSR. Yeah, so the earlier you sign up, the easier it is on us. It lets us know how many people we need um, just to kind of like work the event and make sure that it goes smoothly. So if you want to enter, please sign up sooner rather than later. And if you haven't entered before, please submit a connection test. Um, we connection test everybody before they're allowed into our brackets. Yep. And it's absolutely free so. to enter bracket too. Yeah, but um, I am going to send everybody over to TNS. I think they're finishing Street Fighter VI. Um, so yeah, I'm going to send you guys there and probably catch most of you next week. Unless you play Uni, then I'll catch you Sunday at 5 p.m. Yep. Hell yeah. Any Uni players in the chat? No, they'll, they'll respond. They'll respond. I promise they're there. I promise they're there. <laughs> okay, guys. I saw a couple of them. I saw a couple of names. But yeah. Good night, everyone. Be good to one another. We'll see you yeah. next time. Make good choices, y'all. Bye.